early investment. Another right hand to the body. Been a pretty good pass. Oh, yes. Now goes Hernandez. A right blistering right hand over the top by Brewer. From Corona, California, at the Omega Products International Outdoor Stadium, Thompson Boxing presents We Are Back. Hi, everyone, and welcome to what we think will be a terrific evening of boxing entertainment for you. It's a warm evening, to be sure, but it's a happy atmosphere here at Omega Products International because we are back, and by that we mean fans are back. Boxing is back. It's a crowded schedule, to be sure, in boxing, but the fans are here. They're going to be here in big number. We're sure going to have a great evening of boxing for you. I'm Rich Murata. I'm joined by the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher, and Steve Kemp, co-host of the Three Knockdown Rule and longtime boxing writer. And, uh, Doug, let's talk, first of all, about the occasion. 540 days since Thompson Boxing has been able to have a live show with fans. That's a long time, and it, it feels even longer because when you think about club shows and Thompson Boxing, it's that live crowd energy that really makes the experience. Right. Now, Thompson Boxing did a great job um, making the best of a difficult situation with the pandemic with the 3 2 one boxing series that took place inside right. the Omega Products International. And they, they made their own studio. The matchmaking stayed quality. You still saw up-and-comers like Ruben Torres, you know, climb that ladder, but something was missing, and it was that fan energy. And tonight, we welcome back the families of the fighters. We welcome back kids, the friends, the, the gym mates, right. the hardcore fans, the locals, the smell of food, <laughs> the, the sound of music, and, right. and most importantly, once those guys get in that ring and start letting the leather fly, the sound of cheers, the right. sound of the crowd, that makes the experience complete. Well, I think uh, it goes without saying that, you know, everybody's excited about it, but maybe no more so than the fighters themselves, because they've all remarked on the fact that they're happy to have that energy pushing them. And Steve, tonight in our main event, we've got one of the hottest prospects uh, in Southern California, Ruben Torres, going up against a tough opponent. Yeah, we certainly do, and great to be back with everybody in attendance. And Rich, with you and Doug, it feels like 1997 is a great <laughs> Western form again on Prime Ticket. But moving back, four years ago, <laughs> August of that year, I was here ringside to see a young man make his pro debut that was not only just relatively unknown, he was a actually a guy that nobody knew at all, trained by Danny Zamora. 16 fights later, which will be tonight, he is now a rising young prospect. Having some issues, we'll talk about that later, but we could be seeing him soon graduate to the next level. Well, we're all hopeful of that. Uh, we have a fourth member of our broadcast team, that is Jessica Rosales. She's standing by at our broadcast desk, uh, with our features desk, to bring us up to date and with more features tonight. Jessica. All right, guys. Well, it is nice to be out here during the summer because there is nothing like having fans out here at the fights today. And of course, mark this down, August 14th, 2021. This is a pretty historic day. It's been a long, long time before we were able to safely have fans back. So we were very excited. Not to say that I don't love you guys that I work with, you know, that much, but it is nice to hear some different voices, to see some different faces. And for those of you that were not able to make it out here tonight, we do hope that in the future, if we're still safely allowed to do so that you will be out here to join us because there is nothing like a fight night atmosphere. It is completely unique and it is incredible to be a part of, especially tonight when we've got some local fighters on the card. You will be hearing the crowd making some noise. Now to get things started, let's talk about the return of Miguel Angel Madueño. Of course, El Explosivo now. He's got a record of 23-0. 21 of those wins coming by way of knockout. So it is no wonder why he is called the KO artist. Now he's got power in both of those hands and that means trouble for his opponents because he tells us that he likes to throw punches. So tonight expect him to be just that explosive and exciting. He is scheduled for six rounds tonight in his fight. Moving on to the co-main event. Now this one will also be quite the treat because it is a rematch. A very exciting one at that. Now the first fight when that happened and both of those fighters went toe to toe. And of course, Rich telling us that it was a very good contrast in styles. 
Now that fight ended in a majority draw for Louis Lopez and Demarcus Layton. The two are ready to do it again tonight in that co-main event. It is scheduled for six rounds in the welterweight division. Now in our main event tonight, and I would assume that a lot of the fans that we have out here tonight are going to be here for this one. It is scheduled for eight rounds. We have Ruben Ace Torres against Richard Zamora. Now Ace has a record of 15 and 0, nine of those wins coming by way of knockout. And he tells us, I know I'm a target. I know that my opponents look at me as an opportunity to get to that next step. But he says he is not gonna let anybody be successful in beating him. However, Zamora's got different plans. He's telling us that tonight he's planning for the upset. He's impressed by Ace, but he said he's not going to respect him in the ring. Now, that is going to be the main event. It is scheduled for eight rounds. We'll be seeing some fireworks in that one. Now, before we start the action, though, we do want to introduce you to the two fighters that will be opening up the bouts tonight, Lazaro Vargas and Alexis Alvarado. The two will be starting the action here, and we're going to take a look back at a video to see a little behind the scenes to learn a bit more about these two fighters. Good evening, Corona, California, and welcome back. Tonight, Thompson Boxing Promotions promises a fantastic night of professional boxing action. The fighters are ready, the judges are ready. Corona, California, are you ready? Let's get the party on the road. Please welcome out of the red corner as he makes his way to the ring from La Puente, California, Jerez, Alexis Alvarado. down Alexis here he comes you know both of these fighters and Alexis being one of them early 20s yep. just a couple of pro fights but they're both doing very well thus far in terms of uh, getting wins in their only very few fights yeah and we're talking about quickie KOs first round knockouts and second round knockouts Alvarado's won all three of his bouts by knockout Two by first round knockout and his, his pro debut went into the second round. And I, I saw Alvarado t shirts already here in the stands. As he <laughs> makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner from Indio, California, please welcome Lazaro Bardagas. It's a good choice of music for Vargas. Sandman because he does put guys to sleep and as, <laughs> as quick as Alvarado knocks guys out Vargas knocks guys out even quicker we saw his pro debut on the Thompson boxing card a 3-2-1 boxing card right here um, in November of 2020 and a straight right to the body ended his opponent in like 22 seconds well if he does as well as uh, Mariano Rivera did with Enter Sandman he'll have a Hall of Fame career out of Indio, California. A very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We're streaming to you live from the Omega Products Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, where tonight, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the Path to Glory. We begin tonight's event with the first bout of the evening, scheduled for four rounds of action in the Super Bantam Weight Division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are. Thomas Taylor, Fernando Villarreal, and Raul Caiz Sr. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Raul Caiz Jr. Here we go, fight fans, introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He steps in the ring tonight with the black trunks are trimmed with gold. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed it officially at 120.2 ready pounds. 
as a professional tonight. He steps into the ring undefeated. Two wins with zero losses. Ladies and gentlemen, from La Puente, California, please welcome Alexis Alvarado. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He steps in the ring tonight where the white trunks are trimmed with gold. When he steps onto this scale, he wins officially at 119.9 solid pounds. Tonight, he too enters the ring undefeated. Who won win with zero loss? That win coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Indio, California, please welcome Lazaro Vargas. Once again, your referee in charge, Raul Caiz Jr., to give the final instructions. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Ya recibieron las instrucciones que una pelea limpia. Golpe legales, legal punches, here for you. Legal punches, here for you. Touch gloves, gloves to both of you. What's the All right, let's see how these young junior featherweights match up. Vargas, just two years older. He's got the advantage at both reach and height. And you mentioned uh, family and friends. That's about what we have in attendance right now for these two fighters here early on the card. Yeah, you can tell. Gym mates, cousins, brothers, <laughs> sisters, nieces and nephews. Well, Steve, though, you never know when the, the guy that fights at uh, 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock, or in this case, 7 o'clock, are going to be the guys that are going to be main eventers in a well, year Well, everybody two. has to start somewhere. Some big-name trainers in the corner. Vargas is there by Joel Diaz, helping out tonight, and Alexis Alvarado has a familiar face in Manny Robles. <laughs> We can expect a quick start from Vargas. He's frenetic, he's ultra aggressive. He's got fast hands and loves to work the body. And he comes right out and he's letting those hands go. And succeeding in backing Alvarado up. And Vargas had a height advantage, a slight reach advantage, but doesn't seem like he's wanting to establish a jab and box from the outside. He likes to mix it up on the inside. Pretty good left to the body by Vargas, who's dominated the early moments of this fight. And Alvarado has already lasted longer than any opponent has with uh, Vargas. Yeah, keep this in mind about Alvarado, even though he's 3-0 you know, with three knockouts, the records of his three opponents are 1-11, 0-2, and 0-2. And and so really some soft early matchmaking probably benefited Alvarado to his 3-0 no record. Yeah, Vargas hasn't been in that tough either. <laughs> his pro debut was against the guy making his pro debut, and his second pro fight was against the guy who Boxrec listed at, uh, as 0-9. Uh, so. Well, it's safe to say they're both stepping up against each other, though. Yeah, yeah, well... This is definitely a step-up uh, fight. Oh, Rich, Pete Rademacher, neither guy is, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they drop a boxing gym there. No, 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 no. <laughs> Now, after a frenetic start, things settle down here a little bit, and maybe Vargas will try to get a jab to work. You know, Rich, you take a look at his style, though. Everything is peering on the inside, lead hook, overhand right. I haven't seen much of a jab early on in this fight from him. And I, that's the type of fighter he is. He's a front foot fighter that's going to be very, very aggressive. He's trying to take his face away from Alvarado, and he's been very effective at that here in round number one. Good action, though, throughout round one. The style of the fight established in the first 30 seconds, and it has carried on. Yeah, the pace set by Vargas, but Alvarado has hung in there, and he will, it looks like he will last the first round. So this will be the first time Vargas has gotten out of the opening three minutes. Good little counter right from Alvarado. And here's the end of round one. Hey, 
Weird guys, we are streaming live on our Facebook page. We want to say hello to some of the viewers that have left messages. Hector Manuel Estreo, Maria Casio, Marco Antonio Ortiz Guzman says hello. And here's a familiar face. Jerry Dutchover is watching. I believe the father of Michael Dutchover, a Thompson Boxing Band of Promotions mainstay. Uh, Jonathan Garcia is in the house, as is Christopher Hagen. Keep your messages coming. We'll read them throughout the night. Steve Kim, I'm assuming the normal <laughs> Beto Durant. <laughs> they figured the old timer here in the middle of you guys couldn't deal with the uh, <laughs> with the social media. I don't do a good job of multitasking <laughs> myself. So. Well, we want to thank you. Saw the graphic there of Thompson uh, Building Materials, of course, sponsoring, and we are here tonight at Omega Products International, the outdoor arena. And actually, it's going to be a comfortable night here uh, in terms of weather. Certainly nothing like, Steve, like what you suffered through in the Sacramento fight a couple of years ago oh. when, when uh, what was that, about 110 degrees? That was, I believe, 2018. It didn't get warm until about 945. <laughs> Vargas is right back on the attack. He's making it a, a phone booth battle of exchanges. Alvarado, he returns in kind. What I like in the, in the first round, we're seeing a little bit of it here, is Alvarado will return fire to the body. We'll see if that pays off uh, dividends later in this fight if and the fight gets into later rounds. Well, he's going to have to do something like that, Doug, because he's got a relentless foe in front of him. He has to earn respect. Or... If he believes in his chin, if he believes that he can take this kind of punishment for a round or two, he has to hope that Vargas punches himself out. That's a dangerous gamble. They are going four rounds, and this is the first of our five-bout card here this evening. We've got a lot of interesting little storylines in every fight tonight that I think you're going to enjoy. Including the mystery knockout man from Mexico coming up a little later on. A rematch of a terrific draw. A hot young prospect named the Firecracker, or nicknamed the Firecracker, from Japan. So a lot going on here this evening in Corona, California, including this fight with good action from the two of them, but the most effective punching done so far by Vargas. And I feel that was the case in the opening round. I scored the opening round for Vargas. Not that Alvarado did not have his moments in that opening stance. Alvarado, I have the feeling, Steve, he'd love to come forward, but he can't He can't do it. Well, that's what he wants to do, but at the end of the day, he's not really a natural counterpuncher. So all of the rush that is going into the attack of Lazaro Vargas is really overwhelming Alvarado. And again, we take a look at the first three fights of Alvarado. He's probably never had an opponent that actually had the ability or the gumption to actually come through and Stop walk through anything that, that he has to. Stop doing that. Box. Box. Right, Raul Caiz Jr. warned Alvarado for pulling the head down. Hands are free, you don't need me in there. And they were grappling for, for just a few seconds. And it looks like Vargas has just uh, decided he's going to fight his way out of the in, any sort of clinch or whenever they're in close. Our audience is growing here on this Facebook thing. Carlos Martinez is watching. Bart Ortega, Celestina McCalling, Ike Pickhead, Robert Palmerin, Javier Allen Garcia Vite is watching. And I believe this is a, a uh, relative of Richard Brewer. Lynn Brewer is watching. And according to Henry Ramirez, a trainer working a corner tonight, who is the lead trainer for him, he will be returning in October on the next Thompson boxing card. Good to see Richard again. Thank you. 
I'll tell you what, so far I'm impressed by the stamina of Vargas, which sounds weird because he just, you know, it's just been six minutes of professional boxing. It's just been two rounds, but he's used to fighting less than 30 seconds. Doug, and he's like, able to keep the pace up. Doug, it's like the first time you go into a pool. Once you start going outside the three-foot area, even though it's only in the five, five-foot depth, uh, you feel as though you're in the Pacific Ocean. There, there's a certain unknown about going distances that you've never traveled before. Right, but he looks like he's handling it just fine. He's keeping the pace. And we are in round three of a scheduled four-rounder. Vargas and the white trunks. Alexis Alvarado and the black trunks. And as you two are both alluding to, both of these guys probably shocked that the other guy's not falling down as soon as they hit them, because that's what's been happening in their career. Yeah, both guys have been in soft until tonight. Both guys are hanging tough. I feel like Vargas has the edge because he's the aggressor. He's the one who's setting the, the pace of the fight, the tone of the fight, which is really a firefight. And so far, he's, he's keeping the pace up, and um, his speed and power, um, he, he's retained both. Combination there from Vargas and Alexis answers back to the body. And Alvarado seems to be getting a little something going here. Well, I think the pace has slowed a little bit from Vargas, and now Alvarado has the ability to plant his feet just a little bit more than he had before and actually punch off his front foot. For the first time, you see him pushing around Vargas. Now he's taking the physical play away from him here in round number three. I, I think that's a good tactic to push Vargas back on his heels because I think Vargas is a momentum fighter and he gains momentum and confidence by coming forward. So if you stem that forward march, maybe you get to him a little bit. Maybe you disrupt that, that aggressive style a little bit. Solid right from Alvarado. Suddenly his fans are encouraged. Don't want to forget the partners, of course, with Thompson Boxing, including Fight Hub. As always, joining us here tonight. Shout out to Marcos Villegas. Alvarado's a decent counterpuncher. And even though Vargas has slowed down visibly in this round three, he's still outworking Alvarado. And, and Alvarado has found, however, a home for his right hand on occasion in this round. And they have landed cleanly. Steve, they're earning their dough here tonight. They really are. It is pretty good late round rally here from Vargas who may have retaken the play back from Alvarado just when it looked like it might be a two to one fight. That round three could have gone either way. I scored it for Vargas, in case you're curious. Yeah. <laughs> the Facebook audience is growing. Echo Sulata is watching. Eddie Suarez, Jesus Mendoza, Francisco Lopez Zamora, Fernando Lopez, Junior Laura Rodriguez is watching. Alvaro Arriaga Martinez is watching. We want to thank everyone that made their uh, plans for the night to join us here on Thompson Boxing. A lot of boxing to come here. Steve Kim, Rich Murata, and Doug Fisher. And it is, of course, a crowded boxing weekend, so we appreciate those of you who have joined us live around the world tonight, because we are back. And by we, we mean not only us, but we mean the fans. The fans, and they're, they're, they're starting to come in now more. They were waiting for the sun to set, I think, and it just did. So. Well, Rich, I know you're up in Reno now. There is still traffic on Saturday. Southern California. Our next fight, Miguel Angel Madueno takes on Manuel Martinez in what will be scheduled for six rounds in the junior welterweight division. Madueno, the mystery man from Mexico that I was referring to earlier. <laughs> But he's fun to watch, and you'll see why coming up. But here comes Vargas, really trying to reestablish the momentum here in this fourth and final round. Good 
fight for these youngsters. You know, when we said there was, you got one who's 20 years old, one who's 22. Guys just fall down as soon as they hit him. Now all of a sudden they're in a fight. And even if Vargas is winning this fight, as Doug, as you pointed out, he seems to be uh, in control as far as the scoring is concerned. He's in a fight here. Yes, he is. Both both young men are growing up in this fight because neither fighter had much of uh, amateur experience or much in the way of professional experience coming into tonight's fight. And even though I've scored three rounds in a row for Vargas, I'm seeing a lot of good things from Alvarado that he can build on. They're showing a lot of grit. As far as Vargas is concerned, you know, he says his favorite fighter today is Canelo. His favorite fighter in the past is Chavez. So you can determine from that what he wants to do in the ring. And he's doing it. Alvarado for one of the rare times, suddenly sees some momentum to get Vargas's back against the ropes. But Vargas quickly worked his way off. Yeah, I think Alvarado needed more moments like that where he pushed Vargas back on his heels, tried to push the taller, rangier fighter up against the ropes. But it's hard to do that when the guy you're fighting is, is throwing everything in the kitchen sink. It's been good action from the very opening moments. Good right to the body from Alvarado. It certainly has, Rich. I don't think this skill has been so refined, but it has been an old-fashioned fight. That's the best way to describe it. The two fighters being encouraged by their fans and friends here in attendance. Vargas with a quick rally to the body as this fight nears an end. Final 10 seconds of it coming up. Raul Caiz smartly stays out of the action and lets them fight on the inside there before getting in between them. There'll be a Caiz in every fight tonight, either judging or referee, I think. You know, those guys went four rounds, but they probably felt like they went 12. Good experience for both young men there. Absolutely. Good fight. I think both guys enjoyed the combat, actually. Absolutely, and the crowd certainly did. have the decision coming up and what's going to be interesting we'll see if they agree with our unofficial score Doug Fisher when we return so stay with us we'll be right back system. Makita's LXT batteries take you from power tools to outdoor power equipment. The blower delivers power comparable to a 24cc gas model. From the job site to your home, reach speeds of 116 miles per hour. Use Makita's cordless products anytime, anywhere. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Ladies and 
Gentlemen, number four rounds of boxing action. To the judges' scorecards we go. Fernando Villarreal and Raul Carries Sr. both see the bout 39 to 37. Well, Thomas Taylor sees about 28 to 28, declaring this bout a majority decision in favor of your winner from India, California, Lozaro Barga. Well, there it is. Uh, Vargas emerging with uh, the majority decision. What do you think of that, Steve? Well, look, I, I think they got it right. Three to one sounds about correct. I think Doug had it that way. Lazaro yeah. Vargas right out of the block took the play with the aggressor. Alvarado had better moments in the second half of the fight, round three and four. But for the most part, I believe the majority of rounds was won by Vargas. I thought I the third round was uh, was a good one for uh, Alvarado. Do we, is that the round that you, that Actually, you scored? Actually, I, I scored the uh, last round, the fourth round for Alvarado. So I guess the, the judge that had it 38 to 38 gave the first two rounds to Vargas and uh, the next two rounds to, to Alvarado. But I think the, the right guy won. Yeah. Vargas was, was, was the man in charge for most of the fight. I would say three-fourths of the fight. He was the guy setting the pace and uh, throwing more and landing more. So a very good fight to kick things off, though. It was good action. I enjoyed it. I think the fans in attendance enjoyed it. The crowd building up. We expect to see all the seats filled tonight, which, uh, you know, I'm glad to see. And uh, I'm Rich Murata, along with Doug Fisher, Steve Kim. Fourth member of our broadcast team is Jessica Rosa Rosales, and she is standing by at the features. Not ready. I guess she's not standing by at the features <laughs> desk yet. Uh, she's I've just heard. Waiting for the fighter to get there. He has just meantime, arrived. <laughs> I can see him. <laughs> she's going to have an interview with the winner, and that's the, the way we work things here. She doesn't go to the winners. The winners come to Jessica. Yeah, yeah and, and it's always <laughs> it's always interesting to see how some of these guys do when they're interviewed right after the fight. You know, their personality shows, um, their charisma shows, if they've got it. There you see the three of us. Let's get to the uh, much more pleasant uh, thing to look at, which is just <laughs> no argument there. <laughs> All right, guys, we got Lázaro Vargas joining us here tonight after a fun one to open up the night tonight. So you set the tone for tonight's fight. First off, tell us about going the distance in there tonight. How do you feel about it? It was that it's, it, it's kind of an experience yeah. for me to go the fourth round. Because mostly I've been knocking out the first round, so it's like more experience for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, that's something that the guys were talking about. You know, having such little experience professionally so far, not as much of an amateur background. When you get a fight like this where you go the distance and your opponent is a bit aggressive in there, what do you learn from a fight like this? Um, to keep my, 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 like, to slow down more, right. not throw like hard punches, throw more combinations, yeah. move around. And well, that's more experience for me for the later fights. Yeah, now we did notice that in the third round, you did kind of slow down a bit. Was that part of what you're talking about, what you learned from this fight to make those adjustments? Yeah, it was kind of the both. I, I got a little bit tired. Because yeah. it was my first time going on um, fourth round. Yep. But yeah, they told me to move around, throw more combinations and not try to knock out with one punch. So we're, I was listening to my my corner more. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Alvarado didn't make it easy in there for you. He came out pretty aggressive. He wanted to stay in close, continue to throw punches. He wanted to keep you busy tonight. So what can you tell us about your opponent and you know, how tough he was? Um, yeah, he was re really tough. Yep. But we have we have trained hard for fight for a fight like that. Cause we know he could um, last, and well, good thing we, we came out with the victory. Absolutely. Yeah. And then let's talk a little bit about tonight. Obviously, we've got the music playing, we got the fans out here, and it's a beautiful summer night. How fun is it to be boxing tonight with the fans back here and just being in this atmosphere? Oh, yeah, it was, it was a new experience for me because yeah. it was my first time um, fighting since there were um, fans. So it was my first time. Yeah. Good experience. Could you hear the fans yelling at you? Because I was hearing a lot of coaches out here that yeah, were giving yeah. you some instructions too. How was that? It was um, it was like motivation. It was yeah. like keep going harder and 
So yeah. All right, Lázaro. So what's next for you? Um, we still don't know. Um, we gotta go back to the gym and work yep. the things I I didn't do right. So we gotta go and work harder. All right. Well, we're excited to see what's next. Thank you for putting a great fight on tonight to start the fights, and we'll see you again okay, soon. Okay. Thank you. All right. You guys, that was uh, some very fun action to start the night of fights here for Thompson Boxing. But coming up next, you've heard Rich talking about him. He's been calling him the mystery man. We've got El Explosivo Miguel Angel Madueño against Manuel Martinez. Now, tenemos dos Mexicanos, two Mexican warriors that are getting ready to head to the ring, scheduled for six rounds in our second fight of the night. Let's get ready to meet the fighters. going once again. Please welcome as this makes his way to the ring. Out of the red corner from Baja, California, the one of Mexico. Please welcome Manuel Martinez. I'm liking the energy of these walk-in songs. Well, hopefully Manuel Martinez will show that same kind of energy in the ring tonight. He comes out of uh, Tijuana. Yeah. Where he says know. his favorite fighter <laughs> is Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Not Eric Morales. <laughs> and we'll talk about a little bit more of that later. One thing that is concerning for that young man walking into the ring. First fight since 2019. So look out for an early blitz. Ring rust can certainly be a factor, guys. Well, yeah. Early blitz is the hallmark of the, his opponent. <laughs> yeah, and Medueno is, is scheduled to fight in September. So I, I doubt he's being matched up with a, a, a spoiler here tonight. But Martinez is a tough kid, and uh, unlike Madueno, he's gone the distance a couple of times. He's been eight rounds once and six rounds a couple of times. And now please welcome his opponent, making his way to the ring out of the blue corner from Guasales, Sinaloa, Mexico. Here is Explosivo Miguel Angel Martino. I'm pretty much going to like any guy who's known as El Explosivo. He lives up to it. <laughs> now, he, made, he made his U.S. debut on a 3-2-1 boxing card uh, not long ago. Steve, you called that show with me as well, right? That was in April. In April right? 18th, and he blew out Berman Aguilar in one round. And prior to that, all his previous fights had been south of the border. In fact, it was very difficult, even in this age of social media and YouTube, there really was no footage of him. It was kind of like the missing pieces of the recruiter film. Uh, we're going to see how much resistance he gets tonight. I'm a little bit skeptical, to be honest. Yeah, we, you know, we we got maybe about a minute, a minute's <laughs> worth of action in yes. April. But and it was action. No, we did, and we loved it because he's just a come forward uh, slugger. He wings his shots. But I remember Steve and I thinking, okay, he's raw. He was a little bit tight, and uh, there was room, a lot of room, for technical improvement. As we continue on with the next bout of the evening, scheduled for six rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division. 
At ringside, your three judges scoring bout should it go the distance are Raul Caiz Jr., Fernando Villarreal, and Raul Caiz Sr. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Thomas Taylor. For fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting on the red corner. He steps to the range line where the white trunks are trimmed with red. When he stepped onto the scale, he went in officially at 143.8 pounds. As a professional, he has 14 fights to his credit, including six victories against three defeats with four bouts even. Three of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Baja California de Juanamico, introducing Manuel Martinez. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He steps in the ring time when the white trunks are trimmed with gold. When he stepped onto the scale, went officially at 143.4 pounds. As a professional, he has an excellent undefeated record. 23 victories with zero defeats. 21 of those wins come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, de Guasave, Sinaloa, Mexico, introducing Explosivo Miguel Angel. Thomas Taylor in the final instructions. Okay, belt line is good here. Belt line is a little high, so you're going to bottom line is down here. Gentlemen, that instructions protect yourselves at all times. Thank you. Let's see how these welterweights match up. Matueno is three years older at 22. Martinez has the edge and reach. Matueno is one inch taller. Martinez very loose and relaxed in his corner. Looks like he has very long arms and he could yeah. use them. He's got the wingspan. He would really need it here to try to keep uh, Explosivo off of him. Just looking at their bodies, okay, uh, and I'm not criticizing uh, young Martinez, uh, but he, he, he looks like he's a natural junior lightweight, whereas uh, Madueno looks to me like a full-bodied welterweight, even though he made 130, uh, I'm sorry, 143 in change. Steve, we saw Madueno at not that long ago, as you mentioned, he looked unpolished, uh, technically unsound, but big punch and loading up with every shot, it seemed like. No, but uh, Doc mentioned the physical dimensions of both men. You look at Madueno, he looks the part of a prize fighter. Uh, he just looks like he came out of central casting. I don't know how many rounds he's going to get tonight. I think there's going to come a point in time as he starts getting to his 24th, 25th fight like tonight. He's going to need some professional resistance, as I like to say. And I'm not so sure Martinez really wants to be exchanging with him this early on in the fight. Well, I'll tell you the truth. I think Mad Madueno, I think, already looks a little more polished yeah. to me than he did in that previous fight in his U.S. debut. Yeah, he does. He's had some time to work with Danny Zamora. Now, Zamora was in his corner for his U.S. debut, but Zamora had maybe like three or four yeah. days with him. And Danny Zamora will be seen later on with uh, Ruben Torres, also works with Michael Dutcho. But one thing I really respect about Danny is he is not afraid to get tough sparring traveling around the gym circuit here in Southern. And then there's a good right hand yeah. by Martinez. Yeah, Martinez, Martinez right. landed a hook before he landed that right. Very good right. That's two rights now that he's landed. I, I think Madueno's going to pay him back, though. <laughs> Dueno may uh, pick up the pace here a little, punching hard to the body, too. He's actually following a jab in tonight. A little bit more measured, Rich. There's no doubt about that. There seems to be a little bit more method to the madness. He still looks a bit stiff to me, um, but he's not as tight as he was in April. He comes from a very small... I guess kind of a farming community, I guess you'd call it, ranch farming community around Sinaloa. 
Oh, good left hand there by Madueno. And there's the power. You saw it, and it dumped Martinez, who really felt it. He felt that body shot before what might have been the knockout blow. He gets up at the count of eight, and he is done. That is it. Another one-round knockout for El Explosivo, and it came suddenly. I think that kind of went to script, although a little bit of leather was landed on Madueno. There's going to come a point in time when the matchmakers of this crew are going to have to make a decision, uh, not to really step him up, but at what point do we get him a KG veteran, Doug, that can at least extend him into rounds four, five, and six? That's, now we are 24 fights into this. Right, that's what we need. And um, I think uh, in September, on September 24 in Texas, his schedule opponent is Ruben Tamayo, who has been around the block. Um, I don't know how much the journeyman has left, but he should get out of the first round. You think. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, we'll get through the official particulars as we take a look at the replay action from the uh, first round and only round of this fight. Yeah, and Finally, it's the power told. Right, it's Martin. all Madueno here. He's, I mean, he is a two-fisted puncher. Body shots, I, I think, are the shots that really hurt young You know, Martinez. there's that old phrase, you can't teach power. The question is, can you teach him everything else? Martinez had that kind of look of, what was that when he was, <laughs> when he was on the canvas? He had a couple of moments in that round, and that, that was about it. We'll get the official particulars from Sonny in just a moment, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Discover the advantages of the Henry FortiFiber 123 Moisture Control System. It's as simple as one, two, three. Choose the weather barrier, add the flashing, then finish up with the Henry Moist Top Sealant. Done. No guessing, no gambling. Just the winning confidence you get from our compatible systems. Martinez here tonight. And the beat goes on up next. Katsumi Akusugi takes on Duel Olgin. We are scheduled six rounds in the featherweight contest. And guys, keeping it rolling here on Facebook. Tiffany Ogilvie checking in. She's team late. And then a, a growing list of people watching is Eddie Suarez. From Florida, California. I don't know about you, but it sure does feel good to be outside. Everyone having a good time. Do me a favor. Give me a big oh yeah. 
coming your way. On behalf of Thompson Boxing and Promotions, and moving we forward, thank you for Steve coming Garcia out tonight. is we watching. Thank you for Carlos Martinez, Thompson Boxing no, Promotions. Thank you for supporting these young fighters James and making their way to the future championships. And most of all, now, thank you Rafael for being here tonight. Tonight. Alejandro Cortez Mendoza, Kant Min, Javier Allen Garcia Vite, Jacqueline Mata, Dre Harris, Pau Pau Barredo, Regamar Agnes Cabeza. Thank you for joining us here on Facebook on Thompson Boxing. All right, we've witnessed the uh, one round KO by El Explosivo, who is standing by with Jessica Rosales right now. Jessica. All right, guys, standing here with Miguel Angel Madueño. Uh, first, before we get this interview started, I want to show you guys something pretty cool. Miguel Angel, quiero que les enseñes tus shorts atrás, lo que dice. Ahí tiene el nombre de su rancho, right there. That is the name of the ranch where he comes from. He told me that everybody is watching the fights tonight. Para empezar, ¿qué le quieres decir a todos que te están mirando esta noche? Todos tus fans. Pues... Quiero agradecerles to a todos ellos, este, en especial pues, a la empresa Thompson que hace posible esto, eh, al señor Alex por darme el espacio, muchas gracias, eh, al señor Roberto, eh, tal vez no pueda traducir tanto, pero muchos me van a entender, y agradecer a mis padres, eh, a mi nana, a mi tata que siempre me andan mirando, este, eh, a mis entrenadores que son de Guasave, Mario Rodríguez, Agapito Díaz, muchas gracias. A mi preparador físico, que es parte de mi familia, es mi tío, Miguel Angulo, que me da el espacio para entrenarme y llegar en buenas condiciones. Gracias por todo. All right, now it is a little loud, so we're having some trouble hearing him, but he is giving the thank you to everybody that is watching him, especially his parents. He even mentioned his nana, his tata, his trainers, and of course, Thompson Boxing for the opportunity. Now, tonight, you didn't even give us one round, but we do want to know what's going to be next for you. How busy do you want to stay, and what's the next step? Esta noche, ni vimos un round de ti. ¿Qué quieres hacer siguiendo esta pelea? ¿Qué va a ser el next step en tu carrera? ¿Qué quieres hacer después de esto? Pues primero que nada tengo que hablarlo con el señor Alex y el señor Roberto que son mis manejadores. Ellos dirán qué es lo que viene para nosotros. Okay, he said he wants to talk to his managers first and see what it is that they want to do before moving forward. Y para ti qué son tus um, tus sueños que quieres ver realizado en esta carrera o qué quieres ver pasar. Pues yo creo que el mismo sueño que tiene todo boxeador llegar a ser campeón del mundo y pues mantenerse por un largo tiempo. And I asked him, you know, what for him though is his dream in the sport, and he said that he hopes to one day become a world champion, just like every fighter that is in this sport. Now your record stays undefeated tonight. How important was that for you? Te quedaste invicto esta noche. Hablame un poquito de la importancia de esto, de tu record y, y quedarte invicto. Eh, me quedé un poco incómodo, inquieto por la pelea, como que yo quería seguir peleando. Este, pues se sumo nunca más a mi carrera. Esperemos vengan más de ellos. All right, he said he's hoping for more fights coming forward in his career. Y pues, ¿qué le quieres decir de estar aquí en esta noche? Tell me about being here tonight with all of these fans outside, and it's beautiful, and it's a different atmosphere hearing everybody. Háblame un poquito de estar aquí en esta noche, que tenemos aquí en la ficción, mirando la pelea, dando gritos y todo eso. ¿Qué diferencia hace cuando tenemos la, el quarantine y no había nadie, y ahora tener las personas aquí? Pues más que nada se siente diferente por el país en el que estoy, es muy diferente a México totalmente desde la gente, sí. en la función, en todo. Sí es un poco extraño estar lejos de la gente ya que yo normalmente había peleado nada más en México y siempre que peleaba en México pues como quien dice siempre estaba mi gente ahí. Aquí no, aquí estoy solo, se siente un poco <laughs> diferente pero me siento bien motivado. All right, talking about the difference in fighting with fans here, he said that most of his fights were in Mexico and of course things are very different out there culturally and, and being here the fans are very different. He feels a little bit alone, he doesn't have that same fan base um, but it's different and it was fun and he definitely enjoyed it. Pues antes que te dejamos ir, ¿qué le quieres? Es decir, a toda la ficción que te están mirando ahorita por YouTube, por Facebook, en todo el Internet. What do you want to say to the fans watching at home? Pues agradecerle el apoyo, eh, como siempre lo menciono, a, pues a todo México, a Sinaloa, eh, a mi ejido, la entrada, ranchos alrededor, muchas gracias, y arriba Guasave. All right, muchas gracias. A usted. All right, guys, Miguel Ángel Modueño keeping his undefeated record tonight. Sería todo. Okay. Mucho gracias. Gusto.
right, guys, our second fight is in the books. We are now getting ready for the next fight out here tonight. In Corona, we'll be seeing El Cuete and El Elegante. We're getting ready for Katsuma Akitsugi and Dihul Olguin. They are scheduled for six rounds in fight number three. Let's get the action going once again. Please welcome as he makes his way to the ring, out of the way corner, from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, here is the cool Elegante. Here comes Olguin. In stark contrast to a guy nicknamed Explosivo, we have a guy nicknamed Elegante. Oh. <laughs> and I think the best way to describe him is a seasoned veteran. You take a look at his ledger. Record at this point is upside down, but certainly seasoned with the likes of Rashim Jefferson, Orlando Ruiz, Victor Morales, Oscar Negrete, Bruno Escalante, and Crazy A. Azat Hovanesi and all on his record. He's the type of guy that you really gauge your performance off the past performances against other guys on the way up. Right. If there's a prospect from 118 to 126, Ogain probably fought him, probably took him a distance, and some of those prospects went on to become top 10 contenders and even world title holders. Here now, please welcome his opponent, making his way to the ring out of the blue corner from Hollywood, California. Please welcome Katsuma El Puente Akitsugi. Katsugi, nicknamed the Firecracker. <laughs> and I think a lot of that is because he's really not that explosive. He's not a stick of dynamite. And five fights, only one knockout. Doug and I have become very familiar with him. His last two fights have been right here at the Omega Products Event Center. Uh, unlike the previous fight, I do expect this fight might actually go at least several rounds, if not the distance. Yeah, this, this has distance written on it. Um, Akatsugi. He prides himself on being a technician in boxing, and Ogin is used to going the distance. And at the end of the day, Akatsugi's got five pro bouts. Ogin has 37 pro bouts, so it kind of evens things out. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue on with the next bout of the evening, scheduled for six rounds of action in the featherweight division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Thomas Taylor, Fernando Villarreal, and Raul Caiz Jr. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Raul Caiz Sr. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting in the red corner. He stepped in the ring tonight wearing the blue trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 125.6 pounds. As a professional, his record stands. 15 victories against 18 defeats with four pounds even. 10 of those victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, introducing the Guadalajara Jalisco Mexico, introducing the Hul Elegante Olguin. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He steps in the ring tonight where the white trunks with green and red. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 124.5 already pounds. As a professional, he steps in the ring tonight undefeated. The five wins with zero losses. One of those victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Katsuma El Quete Akatsugi. Yeah. Once again, your referee in charge of the action, Raul Pace Sr. 
Let's see how these featherweights match up physically. I think that the glaring statistic is Akitsugi at 23 is just by far the younger, fresher fighter. Um, Olguin has very slight advantage in reach, and they're the same height. Well, we have them listed as the same height, and I'm sure they measured them, but I, with the referee's instructions, Akatsugi looked much the taller. Right, to doesn't me. he? Okay. Don't believe everything you hear or read <laughs> on the tail of the tape. <laughs> So Akatsugi is a rangy fighter, southpaw, and let's see how Olguin handles that. Although he's been in against a variety of fighters, and really, if you take a look at the records of the fighters that he's faced, they've been very good, and he's been in kind of an unfair situation, it looks like. Yeah, most of the time, and he's the guy who travels to the other guy's backyard most of the time. I'll say this about Akitsugi. When we first saw him on a Thompson boxing card, he was a curiosity, but he um, he showed us some, some ability, some, some technical ability in there. Um, in his second appearance on a Thompson boxing show, he beat a 7 0 prospect named Arnold Dinon um, and showed some real promise. Well, you can show promise and you can have a, a good record, but Steve, it, at some point you've got to be entertaining too. No, that, that, that's that is is part of the business. Uh, I still recall stories of Teddy Brenner literally going up to fighters at Madison Square Garden halfway through a fight saying, son, you may win this fight. I, I may never use you again. That That is part of the process. You know, speaking of uh, matchmakers, uh, a name from the past that I know that you were very close with, Tony Curtis of Four Boxing. He used to take pride in getting guys beat. He really <laughs> felt like if you, could, if you could get through Four Boxing uh, relatively clean, you were going to become a fighter. Right. Well, he used to have a saying, you know, at some point, you got to throw them in the ocean and see if they can swim. Yeah. And, Rich, I don't want to make you feel old, but I grew up watching you. Anyway, I, had, I was waiting for that the whole night, Rich. I, I got it oh, out of there. Boy. I got it out of there. <laughs> you know, by the way, speaking of foreign boxing, I wanted to give a birthday shout-out to Mark Two Sharp Johnson. The best Ooh. flyweight I've ever seen. And a Hall of Famer. In fact, when he got elected to the Hall of Fame, he kept the promise. He said, Steve, if I get elected, I'm going to call you because you campaigned for me. It's true. He kept his promise. Mark Two Sharp, probably the best all-around fighter I ever saw fight live. That's how talented. Agreed. And that's how complete a fighter that flyweight champion was. He had it all, won the title on a one-round knockout over Francisco Tejador yep. and the first African-American to win the World Flyweight uh, Championship. In over 100 years, I called him the Jackie Robinson of flyweights. What's interesting about Tejador, Tejador went life and death with Danny Romero on HBO in fight true. two and four. And, and people thought that was a 50-50 fight. Right. Uh, I remember Johnny Tapia having fits with Arthur Flash Johnson and maybe he got a very fortunate decision. Two sharp blew him out and won. True. As we come to the end of round number one, Akatsugi and Olguin. Want to remind you that Thompson Building Materials, chief sponsor of the broadcast this evening, transforming spaces into beautiful places. There you see the phone numbers in the several different locations of Thompson Building Materials. We're privileged right now to be at Omega Products International outdoors on what has turned out to be a very comfortable evening. Yes. Perfect weather. And the crowd is filling in and the audience is building on Facebook. Bobby Garcia is watching, as is Jose Corona. So is Justin Bolden, Miguel Mikey, joining us. Alejandro Morales, Alicia Calderon, Roberto Rojas is joining us. Jose Belen Angulo Moreno, Alicia Calderon, and Daisy Pajar. I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Thanks, guys, for interacting all over the world with us. Watching on ThompsonBoxing.com. Uh, dot com as well as uh, of course the Facebook. Rich, another thing that I'll never forget as a young buck on the boxing beat from '96 to about '98 uh, was Bob Steiner. Oh yeah.
Yeah, the PR was, guy. He yeah. hated being there, but, but he had to because he, Jerry, he was Jerry Buss's right hand guy. But he didn't really know much about boxing. Didn't seem to care. But he was there every show. He, he had to follow John Bay Rudy, yeah. who knew a lot about boxing. Yeah. <laughs> but and, and could be a miserable guy, but yes. was a lot of fun at the same time. I love Bay Rudy. He didn't like me for at least three years. I'm still not sure if he likes me or not. Now that I think about it, John, I like John. <laughs> I'll always love John Bay Rudy for uh, my favorite nickname that he gave a fighter: Mario Bucket of Blood Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> and it was usually Mario's blood. <laughs> That's the problem, was the problem with his career. Well, he did all the foreign boxing programs and had all the catchy nicknames. You know, there are similarities between Thompson boxing, uh, the family atmosphere, the, the regulars that come out to all of the fights, the having regularly scheduled fights, and foreign boxing from the past. The consistency. If you, if you go back to the heyday of foreign boxing, which you were there ringside for with guys like Tom Kelly, Chick Hearn, did they go twice a month? They did. I mean, that's a lot of shows. For sometimes night sometimes three times a month. Sometimes they'd have two shows in, in Southern California, one in Englewood, one in Anaheim, and then a third show um, in Las Vegas. All on KCAL Channel 9. That's right. And they used to do a lot of those uh, uh, fights up at Caesars Tahoe yeah. or uh, right. in Las Vegas at various hotels. That's where people like Mark Sharp Johnson, Marco Antonio Barrera, Martin Castillo, yeah, Juan I Manuel was, Marquez. I was, at, I was at those fights as a fan. Rich, I still maintain the last great night for forum boxing was April of 2001 when Guerrero just undressed Prince Nassim Ahmed. That was a great night for forum boxing. Yes. And really everyone on the West Coast. That's on my all-time five favorite uh, fights on a personal basis, yeah. you know, that I ever watched that I felt really happy about, you know, the, the way that it turned out. And I think John Bay Rudy would agree. <laughs> hey, old game is connected. In, in this battle of southpaws, old game has found a home for a right hook. Although, you know, Akatsuki is reacting pretty well, though, inside the pocket. He is not running from this fight. And he's not unraveling when he gets tagged. He'll, he'll, you know, he'll bang his gloves together and say, "Bring it on!" and then land his shots. Olguin with a couple of rights. I think Olguin's doing a good job of switch hitting too. Olguin, one of those gatekeepers, and Akatsuki is going to need to show that he can handle that. Yeah. You know, Rich, you talk about the development of fighters as it relates to Thompson boxing. They have developed the likes of Danny Roman. As we take a look at one of the fighters coming in here, that's Louis Lopez. Danny Roman looks like he's going to be fighting September 18th. Uh, they have not come to an agreement yet. A lot of rumors about Raiz Ali being the opponent. But uh, when I think of Thompson Boxing and their development, Doug, the guy I think of is the Desert Storm, Timothy Bradley. Of future course. Hall of Famer. Don't yeah, you and what, when he was fighting on Thompson Boxing cards, it's before streaming was really yeah. a big thing. So he was literally fighting in the dark. And as talented and as tenacious as he was, he wasn't one of those prospects that people, even in Southern California, were buzzing about. People were talking about Victor Ortiz and Oxnard. They weren't talking about Tim Bradley, but the cream does rise. And Thompson Boxing brought him to England to win a world championship. Junior winner. That's right. And can you believe that was his first time fighting as a pro fighting outside of California? Yeah. <laughs> And they were shocked, let me tell you, in England. Yeah. When Bradley dropped to Twitter midway through that fight. Uh, Witter, I should say. <laughs> A Twitter on the mind here tonight. Still trying to recover from that uh, <laughs> Steve Kim uh, remark about growing up watching. <laughs> Holy smoke. Good grief. <laughs> We're seeing again Old Gein's switch hitting ability. He started this round out orthodox and now he's southpaw and he's landing his shots, although both guys are mixing it up well. This is round three, it is scheduled for six. Old Gein in the blue trunks, Akatsugi in the white and red. Akatsugi in, now out of Hollywood, California. He's going to get an education tonight. He's going to get some good experience. Because Old Gein just isn't just tough and game. He's crafty. He's savvy. He's going to give him a lot of different looks. Yeah, just right there, Doug. He went from southpaw to orthodox right, right at the flip of a dime. He's pretty good at it. He, he does it fluidly. I think 
watching. Ogain is showing off his uh, his defensive ability right here. His timing, his defensive ability. He's kind of letting Akitsugi take his shots, and Akitsugi's having a hard time finding the mark. There's that seamless transition that uh, Doug just referred to to Southpaw. And Akatsugi, who's normally the southpaw in the ring, now has to deal with a southpaw himself. Southpaws aren't used to fighting southpaws. <laughs> or training or sparring with them. Nice uppercut from Akatsugi, though. We mentioned Hollywood, California. Home of uh, big time boxing, of course. Manny Pacquiao trains there. Wild Card Gym. We'll talk a little bit about Manny's big fight next week. A little bit later on. We have the very crowded boxing schedule. Some people think, you know, there's a lot of shows on the same day that it's a bad thing for boxing. Some may not agree with that. How about you, Steve? Well, I think it's interesting. It, it beats having no fights at all. Because the weekends that are really empty, which are actually rare, I, I don't know what to do with myself. I'll be honest with you. But um, I am actually, I wrote a story about it this week on Snack.com for my Canines Corner column. Um, I do think more promoters or networks are going to start looking at Friday. Saturday afternoons and even Sundays. And we've actually seen a couple of bigger shows, Showtime pay-per-view, they're going Sunday with the Tyrone right. Woodley, Jake Paul fight. Right, there was a Golden Boy card uh, in, in July yeah. at the Bank of California. That was on a Friday. And, and it worked. I, when I grew up in the 80s, uh, watching CBS, NBC, ABC, a lot of those fights were actually in the afternoon. Hey, I remember when Forum Boxing would go on Mondays yeah. at the Forum. That's right. You know, the, the, the biggest, they talk about this confluence of uh, shows from the different promoters. I remember a few years ago, and I railed against it at the time, in Las Vegas, you had Sergio Martinez fighting Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. on Saturday night, and just down the, and they were they, they were fighting at the Thomas Canelo. and Mack Center, just down the street, Canelo's fighting right. against fighting uh, Josecito Lopez, Josecito Lopez on the Thompson same boxing night. graduate. You know, that was uh, September of 2012. Well, and this is how much things have changed. Chavez was the much bigger draw than Canelo that week. At that time, that yeah. was 2012. Yeah. Um, and the reason they fought on the same night, neither fighter would, would budge on yeah. that, was because both of their fights were being televised live in Mexico to go, to, uh, to precede um, sort of like a State of the Union address from the president of Mexico, which is a tradition of Mexican Independence Day weekend. Whatever happened to that Canelo guy? <laughs> you know, he turned out all right. He turned out okay. I'll tell you, he turned out a hell of a lot better than I ever thought he was going to uh, early in his career. You know, I admit that I thought he was just a hype job with the red hair and all, the, the Canelo name meaning cinnamon and everything, and it was kind of a cute little thing. And boy, I, that's probably the most wrong I've ever been really? about a fighter. You know, you know what, Canelo. you know what, Rich? You, you, were, you were right if Canelo wasn't one to continue to learn and work at his craft. He's one of those fighters that is a student of the game, a student of its history, a student of the craft of boxing, um, and somebody who really learns from each experience. But yeah, if you were watching Canelo Alvarez in 2010, 2011, you're like, okay, he puts butts in the seats, and he's an entertaining, you know, boxer puncher. But he continued to evolve as a fighter into a truly world-class fighter, and today he's an elite fighter. We are in round four of what has turned out to be a chess match. It's interesting with uh, Akatsugi that if, if you go into the future, physical conditioning, Rich, is going to be key for a guy like him. Every fight's going to go a lot of rounds. It looks like he catches pretty well, but he really does not have the power. He's going to have to develop his volume punching style, and he's always going to have to be in shape as he catches another right hand off the ropes there. You can be an entertaining fighter if you don't have power. I mean, there have well, been as, pure boxers who have been okay to watch, well, fun to watch. As long as you are willing to sit in the pocket and be a volume puncher, you can be. Not everyone is, though. You've got to out-hustle your opponents. Nakatsugi doing a nice job jabbing, getting around the ring. A good little step over there. Yeah, he's showing some nice angles and some nice movement. Some, some good footwork. 
But he, he has to keep his focus. He can't relax against this veteran because this veteran has, he's just experienced everything that a fighter can experience in the ring. So he knows what to do in any occasion. I do like what he's doing in this round, though. Half a minute to go here in round number four. Scheduled for six. Now Alguin coming forward. You know, that little pivot move that Akatsugi makes in there is a nice little veteran move. He's only had five pro fights. One thing I would do is, look, you take a look at Olguin, been very crafty with the upper body. I would concentrate a little bit more downstairs and just center him with shots right to the gut, to the body, stabilize that movement. I agree, Steve. I think Akitsugi has done just enough to win this round four, and he needed to because I, I scored rounds two and three for Olguin. Two rounds to go. All right, taking a look back at Facebook, uh, Bart Ortega is watching, as is Don Danny, Nohemi Tobias Franco, Tari Guana Alvarez, Donito Vasquez. Let's see who else here. Uh, Aldo Vasquez, Pablo Alvarez, Danny Raver. Uh, let's see who else. Elisa Heru, Christina Nuela is watching. Dre Harris, thank you. Maria Munoz. Miguel Rodriguez, Leonard, Leonardo Galvan, Oscar Lopez, Erwin Lorena, and Salvador Torres. Thank you guys for tuning in. Absolutely, you're tuning in from around the world. I feel like Casey Kasem. <laughs> As I date myself. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is round number five, scheduled for six. Sugi took away his momentum in that it's fourth great, round. It's a great little thing to have in your arsenal if you can do it, as Doug, as you put it, the seamlessly. You know, Terrence Bud Crawford is probably the most seamless guy that I've seen yeah, go from right-handed to left-handed. He's the best since even, Marvin Hagler. You don't even notice him. Yeah, it's incredible. You're right. Some guys try to switch up when they're in trouble, and they, it, some, it usually gets them into more trouble, I yeah. think. When Olguin is in a southpaw stance and they're in close, Akitsugi is open for uh, the right hook. And Olguin has tagged him more than a few times during this bout. Don't forget Ruben Torres, one red-hot prospect, coming up against Zamora in our main event later on tonight. Torres opening a lot of eyes in the boxing community and helping himself out by doing a lot of interviews on a lot of podcasts, I've noticed, too. He's getting around. People are noticing him. Yep, yep. He is, he's on the radar right now um, of hardcore fans and boxing media. And that's the first step of a prospect sort of crossing over. Guys, I think Akatsugi is having a very good round here. A little bit more active, quicker off the trigger, and enforcing his youth. He's a this pressure is, athlete. Yes, this is what he needs to do. He doesn't he doesn't want to give Olguin time to think or room to operate. He's smothering him right, right. here. You know, and you would think that his style would be, I'm going to stay outside. But he actually did a good job there of imposing his will on Olguin and putting him putting him into the corner. Rich Murata, Doug Fisher, Steve Kim. We are ringside in Corona, California. Thompson Boxing. I'm impressed with the offense from Akitsugi in this round um, and the punch variety. And I think it's been an entertaining round. Doug, this is what he has to be. He's not a power puncher. He's not going to get you out of there with one punch. He has to be death by a thousand cuts. And that's what he was in round number five. Although he did get bothered by a punch late in the round from Olguin and he pawed at his, his uh, mouth a little bit. I don't I know if, he that. He, if his mouthpiece got jarred or loose a little bit or he thought he was bleeding or what. Shout out to our ring card girls who are here this evening. Rich, we go back to those forum days. We were at the very last years of it. Uh, I feel very fortunate, as does Doug, that even though it wasn't quite the program that it was in the 80s, I mean, we got to see the development of Marco Antonio Barrero, Juan Manuel Marquez, Rafael Marquez, and Mark Two Sharp Johnson. You could arguably say all four belong in the Hall of Fame. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. Matter of fact, I think the only one who hasn't been inducted into the Hall of Fame yet is Raphael. Yeah. And of course, they had the ring card girl yeah. contest. The Budweiser, Budweiser girl. <laughs> That's right. Always a popular feature of the prime ticket broadcast, by the way. <laughs> well, Tom Kelly had his uh, amazing descriptions of all of the... Anyway, back, back to the fight, guys. <laughs> I did want to mention the ring card girls here tonight. Alia, Sarah, Ashley Adams, and Amaris, who are entertaining the fans and informing the fans as to yes. what rounds are coming up. They've been here this evening. And uh, we go into our final round, round number six, between... Akatsugi and Olguin, which I feel has become a more intriguing fight as it has gone on in these last couple of rounds. Yeah, these guys have warmed up and they've, they've figured out each other's styles and they figured out ways of landing leather. Um, Akatsugi closed the previous round landing leather and Olguin is beginning this final round landing leather. Doug, I don't know what the scorecards are, but if I'm in the corner of Akatsugi, I'd say, look, I think you're ahead, but I think it'd be a good idea to win round number six. Yeah, and I think he does that with volume. Volume in his brand of pressure, which obviously is going to be calculated pressure, because, like I said uh, before the bout, Akitsugi prides himself um, on uh, his boxing IQ of being a thinking fighter. Akatsugi actually willing to fight in close. He had the double and triple jab going earlier, but now he's staying close to Olguin. And there's that double jab again. It's not bad, that double right jab that he has, and putting punches together, yeah, showing er more combinations. Right. The jab, landing a jab is, is helping him set up his, his power shots. Um, early in the bout, he was just kind of pawing with that, that southpaw jab. Again, the smothering tactic by Akatsugi, which you would suspect Olguin would be trying to use as his own strategy, but Akatsugi is using it and sometimes to good advantage. Steve, what do you make of that, that he's willing to fight inside? With well, him? look, here's the issue with Akatsugi moving forward as he moves up the ladder and faces better guys. He doesn't have great power, so he's going to have to have two things, great conditioning and the ability to punch with volume and be really, really active in there. That's going to have to be his ring identity. Final half minute of the fight coming up. Might be a good time for Olguin if he can, if he has a juice left in the tank to, uh, you know, try to open up here. As you guys suspected, we got rounds. We got a good effort from Olguin, and uh, again fighting another undefeated fighter as he has many times in his career. This is going to be an interesting decision. I believe Akatsugi won the fight, but I could see a scenario where at least one judge gives Olguin three rounds. Yeah, which would it could be make a draw. A draw. Yeah, I can see that. I've got it 58-56 Akitsugi because I gave him that sixth round. But that was a close round. Yeah. All right, we're going to find out the interest. The uh, decision will be interesting. We'll hear it from Sonny Franco when we come back. But uh, stay with us. We're going to take a quick break and be back with that decision. Paving the way to your personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. Find yours at bellguard.com. De Acero es un fabricante de diversos productos de acero con más de 60 años de experiencia en la industria. De Acero tiene un compromiso firme con un crecimiento sustentable que beneficia a la empresa, su medio ambiente, sus empleados y las comunidades donde está presente. Cuenta con la tecnología de punta en sus procesos de fabricación para el cumplimiento de normas de calidad ASTM y otras a nivel internacional para servir a sus clientes en diversas industrias y mercados del acero en México y a lo largo del mundo. 
Somos Grupo de Acero, una empresa orgullosamente mexicana. with Katsuma as the fight wore on because he did start showing us a little bit more in terms of those movements in the ring, those angles that he started throwing, doubling and tripling up on his jab and throwing the combinations. Yeah, and it looks like Olguin did enough to make the fight entertaining, to provide professional resistance for Akitsugi to learn from, not enough to uh, impress the judges to, to, to score more than one round for him. Well, as I like to say, <laughs> there's a reason why they brought him in. It's he true. played his role perfectly. Uh, be there, be tough, be durable, may not ha be enough to win, but actually extend the fighter just a little bit. But again, with Akatsugi, at his best, he's going to be in a lot of good action fights because he has to be. It's going to be death by a thousand cuts. Well, let me ask you then quick as a follow-up to that before we go to Jessica. What is he going to have to do to be able to get to that next level? Well, he's only 23, and I've seen a lot of fighters make that jump from age 21, 22, and all of a sudden at age 27, they're different guys. Like we mentioned, Canelo Alvarez, one of the first things I remember about him is nearly getting knocked out by Miguel Cotto's brother. Right, right. And look where he's come. Uh, guys can improve, they can get better, but you have to understand your ring identity and you have to have a work ethic. Well, he is 6-0 uh, and now and standing by with our Jessica Rosales. Jess? All right, guys. Joining us now, Katsuma Akitsugi, who remains undefeated. Now, here's going to be the trick. He told me that he got hit in the ear, and so he can't hear as well tonight. So I got to yell a little bit so he can hear me because we're also competing with the music. But let's talk about tonight's fight. First thing that you said to me was it was tough, a hard fight for you, yes. those six rounds. Tell me about it and talk me through it. Uh, I expect he's tough. Uh, but I prepare it. Uh, for this, uh, op uh, opponent changed twice, so it was difficult because uh, way I have to cut the weight yeah. because different way that uh, they wanted to fight. Yeah. But finally, uh, he got uh, he came to here to fight. Uh, I'm very thankful that he came out. Yeah. Even short notice, I'm really appreciate that he he fall. With me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then not just that, but tonight you ended up having an opponent with a lot of experience, you know, much more experience than you have out there professionally and also who gave you a hard fight for those six rounds. What do you learn from a fighter like that being in the ring with him? Oh, man. Definitely. This is 
uh, I can learn from uh, for the next one. Yeah. And then I want to get better every day, every day. So even he has 15, eight, 15 wins, 18 losses. Yep. Uh, I don't care his record. Honestly, I, I I just do every time what I when I step up to the ring. Yeah. I, I'm just thankful my opponent and yeah. my team. Uh, everyone who made to this. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and you know what? We always have a good time when we see you out there in the ring. They call you El Cuete for a reason. You're an explosive fighter. For me, I think you did best in those later rounds. I really liked what you did in the fifth round. For you, when did you start to feel comfortable? What do you think was your best oh. round tonight? Maybe four rounds. Yep. Honestly, first round, I was so tight. Yeah. Uh, you started know. to yeah, feel yeah. a little bit. I, I usually uh, very relaxed, relax, okay. but he made me tight. Yeah. So he's a good fighter. He so I, I, uh, I want everyone to credit for him. Uh, he he fights uh, a lot of prospects. Yes. So I, I really respect that I, I want people to give him more chance yeah. and more uh, long notice that he can <laughs> prepare for yeah. the fight. Do you think he is probably the most difficult opponent that you've had? I think so. I yeah. think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Consumer, so what's next for you? Where can we expect to see? Uh, whenever, whenever they call me. Uh, I, I, after after last fight, yeah. I got uh, my hand injured. Okay, yeah, that's right. That took three months. That pissed me off. <laughs> but I I still train one hand, one hand yeah. running. But that was difficult. Yeah. The, was there any problem with the hand tonight, or was it okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, yeah. Uh, my hands, yeah, hers. But we took the fight, and then yeah. yeah. All right. I, I love what I do. Yes. Well, it definitely shows out there. So, Katsuma, before we let you go, we had a lot of people watching tonight on YouTube, on Facebook, online, and all of that. What do you want to say to them to thank them for tuning in tonight? Uh, I, I usually say thank you. Thank you for everyone who support me. Yeah. Even when I came here, I was so alone. I came by myself, and then now I have a team. I, I, uh, I have my back. Uh, people, A lot of people support me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say. Just thank, thank you, thankful. Thank you, thank you so much yeah. for giving me opportunity. And you know what, too? Tonight is so fun. We have all the fans I out know, here. I know, I know. That was two, uh, two years. I have been no fight, fans. No fans. So how different was this for you tonight? Could oh you hear God, them? Oh my God, that was amazing, amazing. I, 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 I want to come back soon. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we're we're gonna have you uh, one of these days on our upcoming fights again. Of course, you know you always put on a good fight for everybody. Katsuma, thank you so much thank for the so time. Much. Thank you. Congratulations thank on you so the much. win tonight. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you. Thank you. And joining me now, the one and only Ken Thompson is joining us. I just talked with Katsuma Akatsugi. That was a fun fight to watch, wasn't it? That was it? a fabulous fight. Very exciting. Yeah. I mean, from start to finish. Well, that's what we do here. Some very fun and exciting fights, especially with Thompson Boxing. I think tonight we, we started like out hear. very strong. But one of the things to note is that today, this is one to go down in the record books. We safely allowed fans to return to boxing here in Corona, California. Let's talk a little bit about that and how exciting that is to have them back. It's very exciting. After a year and a half, and finally our fans have a place to go, and they are our fans, and they've been at attending our fights for the last 20 years. We've started our 21st year. Yes. So uh, and this is a great show. <laughs> yeah, and in those 21 years, a lot of changes. We've seen a lot of fighters and everything. Tell us about this year, and, and you know, obviously it's been different because of the pandemic and because quarantine, but let's talk about this year and the plans that we have moving forward. Well, we've had uh, six fights so far this year in the bubble, which we're able to keep most of our fighters busy, but yep. to be honest with you, there's nothing like live fighting. And our, for the rest of the year, October and December both, we'll have fights at the Doubletree Hotel in, uh, in Ontario. So yes. 
we're looking forward to a great finish. We got some great fighters, and uh, you'll be going to see some tonight, but you'll be seeing the rest of them all year long. Of course, and let's talk a little bit about that challenge because during the pandemic, as you mentioned, we did have fights here in the bubble. We were inside the warehouse. We were doing what we could to continue to promote and continue to have these fights for the fans. How much more opportunity does this open now that we are allowed to safely bring fans back? Boy, the opportunity galore. Yeah. I mean, all the fighters will be out now getting ready for the fight. So you're going to see uh, a lot more fighters that you haven't seen in the past because yeah. for the last 18 months they have not been able to train yeah. because there was no reason to. Yep. But now they're, they are definitely in the game. Yeah. And so how has this night been for you? I see you sitting over there next to the fans. Are you yelling a couple times as well, too? <laughs> it's been a fabulous night. I mean, we're so happy with this crowd. Yeah. We're oversold. It's a fabulous group. Yeah. Recognize them from all over Southern California and uh, we even have Michael Dutch over here from uh, Midland Texas yep. he's been I getting calls from Lubbock Texas and all over you know so uh, and people are recognizing everybody tonight yeah I saw it's Richard been... Brewer over here as well he's out here in the crowd walking around enjoying the fights that's right everywhere you go fabulous fabulous happy crowds as you can hear behind us it's just one, one in a million. Yeah. I mean, so we're very happy to be back. Absolutely. And as you guys can tell, the crowd is cheering. The crowd is loud. That is the atmosphere that we are happy to welcome back here at Thompson Boxing. And the reason that they are getting so loud is because we're getting ready now for our co-main event, the co-feature of the night. That's going to be a rematch of an August fight in 2019 that ended in a majority draw. So coming up right now, Ken Thompson, we've got Louis Lopez, Demarcus Layton. That is our co-feature today. Tonight. I know a lot of people online have been waiting for this one, and as we just heard, a lot of the fans here as well. We're going to go ahead and introduce you to those fighters. This is a rematch, Layton. You better be ready, because I'm coming strong. I'm back in California. This is the rematch, DeMarcus Layton versus Louis Lopez. Last time it came down to a draw, this time I got a full training camp in not two weeks, and I'm coming back with the win, baby, let's go. Here we go, fight fans, let's get the action going on once again. Please welcome as he makes his way to the ring, out of the red corner from Little Rock, Arkansas, here is DeMarcus Little Rock Layton. DeMarcus Layton, 30 years old. Coming into the ring now for his rematch. I assume he'll emerge out of that smoke. There he is. Yeah. He'll emerge from the shadows. Out of Little Rock, there he is. Starting his walk with some confidence. And when you think of Little Rock, Arkansas in boxing, first name I think of is Jermaine Taylor. And in the ring right now is his trainer, Ozell Nelson, who guided that career. It's Yeah, guided Taylor to uh, 2000 Olympic Games bronze medal and to the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Bit off a little more than he could chew in his last fight, uh, Steve, uh, although he has a very good record. Well, Xander Zayas is one of the three or four best young prospects in the sport, and he got blitzed early, didn't know what hit him. But I... Uh, I expect a much different night against Louis Lopez. And now please welcome his opponent as he makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner from South Central Los Angeles, California. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Louis. big cheer there for Louis Lopez because for one reason Doug he's the local boy right? he is local and a promoter's dream because he sells a lot of tickets sells a lot of tickets and he's a promoter's dream in that he does not avoid challenges this is his second fight against Layton who is a difficult style for anybody and he's coming off a loss 
to a very talented prospect named Saul Bustos. Right. And he just, he had the confidence to take on a guy like Bustos. Bustos is the kind of fighter that most young prospects avoid. And one of his corner men told me to say hello to everyone from Northern California and Santa Ana that is watching in behalf and support of Louis Lopez. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from the Omega Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the co-main event of the evening, scheduled for six rounds of action in the welterweight division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are... Thomas Taylor, Fernando Villarreal, and Raul Caiz Jr. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Raul Caiz Sr. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting under the red corner. He steps in the ring tonight where the black trunks, with the red trunks trimmed with black. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 146.8 already pounds. As a professional, he has 11 fights to his credit, including eight victories against two defeats with one about even. Five of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us tonight from Little Rock, Arkansas, please welcome Demarcus Little Rock Leighton. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He stepped in the ring side with a multicolored shorts. When he stepped onto the scale, he went officially at 147 solid pounds. As a professional, he has 10 fights to his credit, including eight victories, one defeat with one bout even. Four of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the fighting pride of Corona, California, please welcome Louis Lupin. And once again, you're in charge, Raul Caiz, a senior, to give the final instructions. up. Demarcus Layton is the older man at, thir at, at age 30, but he has significant height and reach advantages in this matchup. And from uh, those height and reach advantages, we had a very good contrast in styles that we saw in the first two fights, and they were what you would expect, Steve. Uh, Lopez, the relentless come forward guy, and Leighton, the rangy fighter, trying to stay out in the middle. Well, of the you race. can see that immediately, that Lopez is going to try to press the action and take away the distance and space of Leighton that wants to box early. Keep this in mind. I would almost throw out Leighton's last fight. I, I don't think Lopez is quite the puncher of a Xander Zayas. I don't think a lot of guys really are. Both fighters actually are coming off a loss. So uh, something to prove here tonight. And they want it, they have something to prove to each other, which is why I'm really happy that matchmaker Alex Campanova put this fight together and got these two back together. Their first fight was very entertaining. The first minute of this fight has been very entertaining, as you uh, see each man trying to establish his style. If he can, you've got Marcus Layton in the red trunks. He's a tall, rangy fighter, good jab. He'll switch to southpaw now and then. And then you have the, uh, the local kid. Louis Lopez is a pressure fighter. He wants to force the action, try to smother Leighton if he can. Yeah, I view it as a 50-50 matchup. Um, I like the meshing of styles, and I think it really comes down to who learned more from their first experience, who's, who's evolved more in that time. Louis Lopez was really excited, one of many of the fighters, but I think probably for more reasons, to feed off the energy of the, fight, the fans tonight. And he does have the fans here in the audience. Tonight. Well, let's, let's not lie about this. When a guy comes in from Little Rock, Arkansas, he is going to be the B-side and the visiting fighter here. But he's boxed pretty effectively here in round number one late. At that distance, it's going to be very difficult for Lopez to make any hay. See that good jab of Lane? Oh, good right hand. by a right, and that rocked him. He 
staggers back into the corner, and Louis Lopez is on him immediately, taking advantage. And it's going to be up to Layton to get out of that corner, and so far he hasn't been able to. And Lopez actually backs off. Momentary trouble for Demarcus Layton. Layton let his hands go just at the nick of time when he was in that trouble. Raul Caiz Sr. was looking very close, an inch and closer maybe to stop the fight. A little nod of respect from Louis Lopez at Leighton. Leighton looks like he's recovered well. Though. No, he has one technical flaw of Leighton, who's a very good athlete, very reflexive. Every time he jabs, you take a look at that right hand, it comes right away from his chin and his cheek. So defensively, his hands are already pulled apart and makes it very difficult for him to throw a really a quick, straight right hand. Yeah. So every time he jabs, watch that right hand come right down to his hip. You saw the quick switch to southpaw that we talked to you about. He's going to try to move Lopez around if he can, even if he has to take him by the shoulders and kind of palm around and holds up that last punch at the bell for end of the first round. Good first round here. And again, like their first fight, very entertaining action. I want to talk about some of our people watching on Facebook. Blas Comcho is watching. Miguel Mickey. Jose Belen Angulo Moreno. Berto Godoy. Salvador Torres. Cesar Frias. Martin Alfortas is watching. Bill Tibbs, good friend of ours. Writes a lot of good stories there for Max Boxing is watching. Milven Picanto. Erwin Lorena. Rosalinda Limon, Domingo Mendoza, Tierra Trotter is watching. I want to thank everyone joining us on Facebook. And I hope you're feeling some of the atmosphere that we're feeling right here at Ringside. You mentioned the music earlier, Doug, just and the smell of the food and everything. The smell and now of the with food, the food, now right. with the fans in here, and now we have the breeze. The sun's not in our eyes. It's really, it's a perfect environment. My first time being in this outdoor environment, and um, I love it. I can see why it's so popular. Layton came out here in round two in the southpaw stance and immediately gets to moving around the ring. Switch back to right-handed. Lopez surely won the first round with that assault in the corner. Good right to the body from Louis. Coming upstairs, nearly landed that right, and a good little uppercut from Layton bouncing off the ropes. Layton's got to be careful about being back straight up because he does not tuck that chin. And as Steve Kim noted, when he lets his hands yeah. go, he drops his hands. And he did. He dropped that left hand, and over the top came Louis Lopez. You know, Joe Goosen explains it so well. Every time you throw a punch, that opposite hand has got to be playing defense. That over-the-top right hand from Lopez came in the old uh, Chris Ariola style, yeah. coming from way up top. And Henry Ramirez, of course, in the corner, trainer, trained them both. Ariola's another fighter like Mauricio Herrera, cut his teeth with Thompson Boxing. I loved watching Chris fight. I tell you, those opponents in his early fights, they never knew where that right hand was coming from, and it was coming out of the clouds. Yeah. Oh, he launched it like a shot put. <laughs> and his, his counter left hook was just like, it was so, it was such a natural punch to him. And as I mentioned, Henry Ramirez, you'll see him in the corner. Another Good right, right hand, hand by Lopez. Seems to rock Layton. And Rich, that is a sweeping right hand against that southpaw stance that Lopez is finding a home for. This has been a really good round two for him. You know, in the first fight, nobody really got hurt, although the action was brisk. Nobody got hurt until Lopez hurt Leighton in, in the fifth round. And I think knowing that psychologically works in his favor. Yeah. He was able to hurt the other guy, and he knows he can do that coming in here tonight. Take a look at the 
left eye of uh, Lopez looks like yeah. he's having a problem with I was getting ready to say, one thing an Ozell Nelson trained fighter is always going to have is a good jab. And over time, a good jab is going to lump up or you know, swell up the eyes of, uh, of his opponent. And there's our main event headliner right there, Ruben Torres. Had some issues making weight. We'll talk about that a little bit later. He is matched up with that man right there, Richard Zamora. Little attention to the left eye of Layton as well. Little swelling there, Doug, on the eyelid. Yeah, that's from those overhand rights. Is there a cut there? Yeah, a, a small cut it looks like. They're, they're putting some, um, some Vaseline on there. Not a lot, because it's a tiny little cut. So both fighters experience a little trouble with their left eyes. As we begin round three of once again an entertaining fight, this rematch. Although Lopez, I think, would certainly seem to have dominated the first two rounds. Yeah, Although Leighton did have his moments, especially the last several seconds of the of that second round. The second round was, was competitive, back. yeah. He but was coming back. The quality power punches were landed by Lopez, definitely. Enough for him to edge it on, on my very unofficial scorecard. to left-handed for Layton as he backs into the corner where he had all the trouble. And there you saw Lopez do a nice little job, Steve, of clamping down yeah. on the arm of Layton and punching with his other hand. He has made the decision when Layton goes into the southpaw stance, he's going to throw a sweeping right hand around the corner. Good left out of the southpaw stance by Layton. Now that cut is bleeding. You see on the uh, the left side of Layton's face, Rich. I think it's getting his eye. Yeah, which may be the reason why he's turning more southpaw yes. now, trying to keep that eye away. Good body punch by Louis, and then throwing caution to the winds comes overhand with the right, and then goes underneath with the right. I think uh, an investment to the body would be a smart move from Lopez. Layton's trying to tap the body himself. Guys, you just look at the body language of Layton. It seems to me the air has gone out of the tire a little bit. You can sense him sagging a little bit physically. Well, that could really be detrimental to him because he depends a lot on his legs. I like Leighton's commitment uh, to the body over the last minute. Oh, you could really see him blinking, though, as yeah. you said, guys, from that left eye. It's certainly become a problem, that cut. Yeah, yeah blood, the blood is, is dripping into it, definitely. We're seeing it come down the left side of his face. But a strategic move to go more southpaw in this round by Leighton, although he turns right-handed again. He's having trouble with that eye. Good right hand to the body by Leighton. He tries to open up now, tries to get something going. You can see he still has speed of hand, and he confounds uh, Louis Lopez for the moment. Yeah, despite the adversity of that blood drizzling into his left eye, I actually think Leighton's had a decent round. I don't know if the official judges are going to score the body work, but I am. Raul Caiz is going to take a close look at it in the corner. He followed Leighton right back to the corner as they go to work on it. What about the positioning of that cut, Steve? Well, it's not ideal because he's visibly blinking, and you know that I don't think it's a great. It gives a great optic to the judges. They are certainly paying attention. Both the referee and it looks like a commission member are really looking over the corner of Layton heading in here into round number four. Well, you 
heard Steve talk about the fact that the Demarcus Layton, as we begin round four, was overwhelmed by Xander Zayas in the opening round of their of his last fight, and it looked momentarily like he might be overwhelmed in round one of this fight, but he bounced back and again has been competitive at least in every round. I'm impressed with his recuperative ability. Actually, you believe it or not, he used to fight at 154. He even fought one fight at 160, and he got beat in that fight. Now fighting at 147, but I mean, his body is tight. He can't go much less than that. Yeah, I mean, he's got the frame where he can put on extra weight, but you can tell he's a natural welterweight. Naturally thin. Lopez, on the other hand, as Steve said, he wouldn't. He's fought his whole career at 147. No. Which is, he wouldn't mind testing the waters at 140. Yeah, you take a look. You know, Xander Zayas was a guy. If you look at him, his body type, the guy that blew out late in his last fight, he might make his first title run at 54 and 60. Lopez looks like a guy looking at his frame. If he gets some good work done here, he probably fits in more at 140. <laughs> does not have that long torso that really portends a future of a guy being able to move up and wait effectively. Lopez there just trying to stay in contact, just touch Layton if he can. Layton got tagged by that right hand, but mostly slipped the punch. Layton has to be very careful in these corners. Lopez loves to get him in this situation. And Layton kind of stumbles out of there and gets Lopez, at least momentarily, backed up against the ropes. Switches positions with him. Layton a little bit tired might, and uh, the fatigue might result in those missed punches. Still trying to throw, though. Long range shots. Yeah, he's still in there trying, but Lopez is definitely the ring general in this round. Demarcus Layton out of North Little Rock. Started boxing at 10, but said he didn't take it seriously until he was out of the mil military. Served in military service for three years, applying himself. That uh, explains the 30 years of age. Right. And he's uh, relatively still yeah, that's youthful not, in terms of the number of his fights. Right. That's not old for a fighter any longer. No. It used to be like, you're past it, but uh, things have changed. Was uh, Aliyah Becerra getting the cheers from the fans? Our ring card girl indicating the round number five is upcoming, and of course our main event still upcoming. Ruben Torres trying to bridge that gap into the next level, taking on Richard Zamora, tough opponent. Layton trying to start fast here in round five. <laughs> this again, a six round fight. I think these two could go a strong eight for each other and with each other. And, and you know, Steve, sometimes guys' styles are just made for each no, other and make a good fight. They really are. And, and neither guy has a huge talent disparity. But I do think on this particular night, Lopez has taken the place. Even right now, he's the fresher guy in there. But just seems to have a little bit more mustard. And from that distance right there, he digs a good left hook to the body. He will dominate the action from that range. I think Layton felt that left hook to the body. I think it hurt him. I think he just felt another 
either one, and it's a little bit winded out for after that left hook to the body and caught in the corner. And I think the crowd is sensing his predicament here a little bit, as made Louis Lopez as well. And Leighton is still game, still firing back, but that body attack from Lopez is opening up Leighton for headshots. You Leighton, know what? Leighton dug in a left to the body himself. Yeah, at that point, if I'm Lopez, I just tuck myself in, tuck my chin in, get small, as they say, and don't create separation. Stick right on his chest. Leighton needs to get back on his jab. If Lopez is going to languish at this distance, there's no reason why Leighton shouldn't uh, give him that left or right stick. Well, you know, the interesting thing about their first fight, although I think there's been more material damage done in this fight, uh, the, both to the faces of the guys and actual with the meaty, more meteor-like punches, their, their first fight, whoever would win the round was the guy who seemed to be able to establish his style right. in that particular round. Yeah, the first fight was more of a style matchup, and now it's kind of become sort of a battle of attrition or, you know, a contest of will or, or metal, if you would. Good little uppercut again from Leighton. There are long-arm fighters who can fight inside and well, fight well inside. Well, about Leighton, he's a very twitchy athlete. He's got quick reflexes, but I just don't think he has the steam on his punches at that point. <laughs> Trying to use the ring still, but using the ring here basically to walk away from Lopez. Left hook from Layton, right at the bell. All right, up next here from the Omega Products Event Center, our main event of the night, Ruben Ace Torres takes on Richard Zamora, scheduled for eight rounds in the junior welterweight division. There you can see the look of the outdoor stadium on a lovely Southern California night. And if you see some empty seats, it's because those fans choose to walk around, stand with their with their beer, or <laughs> stand in line at the, the food truck and getting some getting their Here we go, on. Point fans, put your hands together and cheer these fighters on. This is the sixth. Excellent action tonight is a really good card put together by Alex Campanova. And Layton comes out loaded for bear all of a sudden here in round six. He's doing exactly what he needs to do if he wants any hope of winning this. Guys, I think he needs a knockdown or two, if not a knockout. I think Lopez is well ahead here going into the sixth round. Well, Layton got an infusion of energy, it looks like. Lopez welcomes the aggression. He likes to fight. Well, we mentioned in our earlier fight, the fighters enjoying the combat, and we're seeing that kind of same kind of situation. Although Lopez trying to make it uncomfortable for Leighton in there. Good right hand by Lopez. A quick, short, compact right. Straight down the middle. Blood flowing again from the left eye of late. And you can see the fatigue in the, in the body language of Lopez, but he's still oh, in there swinging. Lopez just digging. Yeah, especially to the body, Steve. You can see Leighton now bent over a little bit with his left hook to the body. Leighton visibly sagged from the left hook to the body, and Lopez kept the attack down there with a right, and then another follow-up left to the body. Steve, I think your advice was right. Hunker down and keep going to the body. Well, there is safety inside. You actually find a lot of shelter. You don't want a guy like Leighton to be able to unfurl those long arms. Oh. Lopez left. 
left hook, and that one was to the head. That one rocked late, and he survived. One minute to go. Lopez has the look of a guy who could finish the job here before that final bell. to bounce back. I mean, he took a battering there for about a minute. And the way he sagged from those body shots, I did think he was about to go down. But with 20 seconds to go, now looks as though he'll manage the distance. Good left hook from Layton, trying to close the fight strong. They should get a big round of applause when that final bell hits sounds, which it does right there. The fighters hug each other. And that was a good one. Excellent fight. Good performance by Lopez. He was steady. He was consistent. He picked his spot, stepped on the gas pedal when it was appropriate. Very solid all-around effort. I don't think there's any doubt he should get his hand raised in victory. Yeah, Lopez has won at 59, 55 on my card. If you wanted to give Leighton the benefit of the doubt, I could see 58, 56. But it was a, it was a it was an entertaining fight, competitive fight, and that was a hellacious final round. Well, the crowd certainly thinks that Louis Lopez won this fight. My ringside partners also think that Steve Kim, Doug Fisher. We'll see if the judges agree when we return. Just one minute. We just had a red hot fight. We enjoyed the action. Good action. Louis Lopez already taking his bow, saluting the fans. I'm sure he's thankful. He said he wanted to feed off the energy from the fans tonight, and I think that's exactly what he did. All right, I think we're ready for the decision, so let's go up to the sartorially resplendent Whoa. Sonny Franco. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, after six exciting rounds of the judges' scorecards, we go. Thomas Taylor and Fernando Villarreal both see the bout 60 to 54. While Ca Raul Caiz Jr. sees about 59 to 55. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. The body pride of Corona, California, Louis. from Corona Centennial High School. Well-earned, hard-fought victory. Louis Lopez is a real grinder. Uh, he had a lot to overcome there in that tall, angular Leighton, and he hurt him several times. And uh, I don't think one victory is ever more important than the other, but this is a watershed moment in a sense that you take on a guy they had a draw with, some physical dimensions to overcome. And I don't know if he dominated the fight, but I thought he controlled large moments of it, Doug. I mean, you could say he dominated in terms of rounds one, but he had to fight hard to earn those rounds. The only round uh, that I scored for Leighton was round three, based mostly on the, his body attack. But um, over the second half of the fight, 
the guy who, who had the more effective body attack was Lopez. But how important was it that he took control in that first round with that 30 or 40 second assault in that corner? Well, when you hurt a guy early, you, it's not only just physical, it's also psychological. And, you know, the one thing about Lopez that I like, though, he understands who he is. He's not necessarily a one-punch knockout artist. He's a guy that's going to have to chip away at opponents and really work hard. But, you know, fights of this nature, and any matchmaker will tell you this, from Brad Goodman, Bruce Trampler, Eric Botcher, anyone that's done this for a while, Robert Diaz at Golden Boy, they love these type of fights because you get a lot more benefit and you learn something more than a one-round knockout. What's up, Team Lopez? Well, before we hear Jessica Ra Rosales with Louis Lopez, Louis. Everybody, all my family from San Ana, Orange County, all my hometown friends from Corona, I love you guys. I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. Thank you guys for coming out. Once again, go to Fun and Fun for Ronald California. to get ahead over to uh, uh, Jessica and Doug. Let's let's talk a little bit about it because I certainly saw improvement in I have. Louis and I've over his last few fights I see a guy who is who is getting better and better and getting his fights are more exciting now I think than oh, they absolutely. were earlier in his career. Well he always had the mentality for exciting fights but he didn't always have the ability to be effective enough in the ring to to compete at a sort of a higher level um, which is why he was held to a draw in his first fight with Leighton, um, and why he lost his last fight against Saul Bustos. Uh, but I see improvement from the Bustos fight to this fight. Um, and, it, and it has more to, to, than just uh, how their styles matched up. It's his confidence, but he's learning. You can tell he's learning yeah. fight by fight. I thought he had a much uh, a, a better punch selection in this fight than he did in his last fight. Well, he said he had lessons to learn from the Bustos fight. Uh, but also, you know, you've got to learn how to take a defeat and turn it into a victory in your next fight. And so let's uh, let's uh, head over to Jessica because I think Louie is uh, with her right now. Yes? All right, guys, you know, this might be the most amount of fans that we have had over here near the features desk all night, and that is, of course, because of Louis Lopez and that win that he got tonight. First off, Louis, we got to tell you, you took a moment to talk to all the fans while you were in the ring. I think all the fans at home are going to feel a little bit left out if you don't take a moment to talk to them as well. So here's your moment to say what you all want to All my family and friends home. back that's watching it online live, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I know I had a big crowd here, and I wish you guys could have made it out, but I hope I didn't disappoint you guys. All right, and don't worry, we will get to talking about that big crowd in just a bit because I could not hear anything. We hear people yelling right now, but let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about tonight's fight. Obviously a very hard fought fight for you. Coming off of a loss and then having, you know, that draw with him before, what did you have to prove out there tonight? Honestly, I just had to, I had to bite down and really sack up. Uh, all my family knows what I had to go through to get to this bite. I know I had a rough year last year, but I just wanted to make everybody proud and come out and show everybody what I'm made of. I haven't lost it, so, and I'm just barely, I'm barely tapping right now, so I just want to keep working, keep working and keep getting wins. All right, and of course, Demarcus Slayton, this is a fight that you had back in August of 2019. In that time, you would expect a fighter to change. How did you make those adjustments for the Leighton that you saw then and the one you saw tonight? I'm a totally, completely different fighter than the last time I fought him. I'm in way better shape. As you can tell, my physique looks a lot better. Um, I'm hitting the hills. I'm working on my conditioning. I mean, that's that's all. That's my biggest critic right now is just working on my conditioning. If I'm in tip-top shape, man, I'm, I'm a problem for everybody. And I really feel like I am. Yeah, of course. And you dominated tonight's fight with a majority of all of those rounds. What would Shout you say? out to uh, Demarcus Layton, man. That guy's a tough, tough dude from Arkansas. Very tough. I'm, my ups go out to him. Yeah. And of course, tonight you dominated those rounds, of course, winning the majority of all of them. What would you say is the one thing that worked for you out there tonight? What were you really relying on? My body. My body attack was really, really hurting him. Yeah. I knew I knew in the first fight I was, I was dictating the pace and I was going to his body a lot. So this fight, I really tried to work his body, just work, 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 and try to stop him. But I just can tell he's a really, really tough dude. And I, I tried to get him out of there as best as I could, but the guy just didn't win the fall. Yeah, 
You know, and I love that when fighters take a moment to shout out their opponent. Obviously, Leighton was a tough guy out for you in this fight. What do you have to say about him and, and the hard work that he put in and, and what he showed tonight, his heart? He's a tough dude, as you, as you can tell. I heard, him with the, I heard him a lot with a lot of body shots, and he, he really sacked up and he stayed in there. I, I give my ups to him. I think he's a, he's a problem for a lot of people. He's, he's a really, really tough opponent, so I hope nobody takes him lightly because he's going to be coming for you. All right, and one thing that I love is that tonight we did welcome fans back out here to watch the fights in person, enjoying it with us. There was a point where you had him in the corner, you backed up, the crowd cheered, and you reacted to them. How much did you feed off of the crowd's energy tonight? I, I always feed a lot off the energy of the crowd. I know going into my last fight with uh, with Bustos, I didn't have a crowd. It was in the bubble. It was a little difficult. Yeah. And it was hot as shit that day. It was probably about, I don't know, 108 degrees, 109 degrees in this warehouse. And I'm just glad I'm fighting in front of all my people. Yeah, it changes everything, right? Oh, for sure. All As right. You tell. <laughs> well, congratulations on the win tonight. Obviously a very fun fight. Let's just show everybody at home the power that you have. Can you do me a favor? Can you turn around and just like wave at everybody and get them to go crazy? Like listen. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. the fans out here tonight but of course as we get ready for that main event let's send it back to rich steve and doug louis lopez milking the moment why not hey listen it's a fun night here tonight and i do want to follow up jessica rosales uh, earlier tonight was interviewing ken thompson and uh, the we are back show here this evening uh, here in corona outdoors fans back for the first time 540 days steve what ken thompson did i think was great for boxing and at a personal loss because he continued to promote fights with no chance of getting tv money with no chance of getting a gate to fans he to keep his fighters busy he promoted fights the 321 boxing series that you guys did i mean and and he kept it alive for him rich long before this series began and I started getting paid to do this. I can say it honestly. I thought they were the best club program in America. Development of fighters, development of talent, and getting guys like Danny Roman, Tim Bradley, playing a role with Chris Ariola, Mauricio Herrera. Uh, I believe that the last 16 to 17, 18 months, they have separated themselves. No disrespect to any of the club shows. I, right. I know that they all operate at a very small uh, profit margin, if there's any. There's only one that really kept their doors open on a consistent basis, and that was Thompson Bob. Boxing. And even now, a lot of these club shows or club promoters, I'm not so sure what the future is. Uh, my hat's off because at the end of the day, the fighters need to fight. If they don't fight, the career stall. And they certainly did their part to make sure that these young men had a chance to at least continue to develop their skills. Well, some of these guys managed to stay active because of that. And many people can't believe that Manny Pacquiao is still active and he'll yeah. be fighting next week. Yeah. yeah amazing. And we didn't get the fight that we thought we were going to get though right. against uh, Errol Spence, but nonetheless, Ugas has stepped in. He's a good fighter. There's no and question about it. Who would take Ugas on in like 11 days notice? But Manny Pacquiao. Right. Like, like Manny Pacquiao reminded us what made him so special 20 years ago when he burst upon the U.S. scene by upsetting Layla Ledwaba. And that really is, it's not that, it, it's is it's, 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 it's amazing natural talent that's that explosive speed and power but beyond that and you know his, his ability to excite fans um, it's his, his willingness to fight anybody if you go back 20 years he followed up that title bout win against Lalo Ledwaba against another title holder who you were familiar with being with Forum Boxing Agapito Sanchez right a gritty rugged ugly uh, tough fighter that dirty, nobody wanted dirty to fighter. Dirty. <laughs> you said it you said it right <laughs> nobody wanted to see that guy yeah. and he fights him in his very next fight fast forward a couple of years breakout performance against uh, Marco Antonio Pereira 2003 gets him on pound for pound list makes him a superstar in his home country um, he follows that up fighting Juan Manuel Marquez who nobody wanted in, in 2003 and 2004 not even Pereira and the great Eric Morales wanted any of Juan Manuel Marquez certainly not the Prince Nassim Ahmed as you know so this is what really marked his character is that win, lose, or draw, he's going to challenge himself, even now that he's in his 40s. Right. Well, he is going to leave an amazing legacy regardless of what happens next week. I mean, when you look at the breadth 
of his career. It's unbelievable. You know, I had spoken to a couple of big name trainers that we all know of. I was surprised. A lot of them were picking Manny Pacquiao. And when the news came out this last Tuesday, it reminded me of that song from Banana Rama, Cruel Summer. I mean, we, we didn't get any of the heavyweight fights <laughs> we right, wanted. Right. We didn't get Joshua against Fury. Then we didn't get Fury against Wilder. Uh, but now we get Ugas, and it is interesting. You know, Doug, I, I actually am not surprised Manny took this fight. He went through a long training camp. Yep. Also, his whole life, he's been facing taller right-handed fighters. True. I actually surmise that it might be a bigger adjustment for Ugas to face a whirlwind southpaw because I've talked True. to a lot of trainers. They'll say it's almost impossible to prepare for Manny Pacquiao. And look, it's not a career-defining win. It should he beat Ugas, which I think he will. But, it, but the fact that it may not even be one of his top 10 victories shows you the depth of his right. career. I don't know if Ugas makes the top 20. Yeah. And Ugas, Ugas can fight his ass solid. off. He He's may solid. have defeated Sean Porter a couple years ago. I had him winning that fight, by right. the way. So there right. you go. A lot of people did. Well, let's talk about what we've got here tonight. Ruben Torres. Oh, Ruben. And this, here's a guy now who's going to try to advance from the situation that he finds himself in of being a prospect, an outstanding prospect, into being what you would call a contender. Well, the, tr the, the, the transition is very simple. We know he's a bright prospect. At what point does he become a young contender? But there are some issues. As you were at the weigh-in yesterday. He didn't make the weight, didn't really come close. Right. Uh, what I'm being told by Thompson Boxing, Brain Trust, and Danny Zamora, even if he makes the honor roll tonight, he's going to be called into the principal's office. They're going to have a come-to-Jesus moment. They want him at 140. The bottom line's very yeah. simple. This is a lifestyle. Your career's on the line. They have invested a lot of time in him at 140. So that's the question. No matter how good he looks tonight moving forward, can he actually make 140? Yeah, well, he was about a half a pound over. He took some time. He tried. He lost a little bit of weight, but he couldn't get what he needed to get off. So he gave up 20% of his purse. Right. So yeah, that lets you know he actually tried. I mean, it's 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 if you're going to give up that money, um, you know, He's not in a position where he can just give away his purse. This is not like some of these uh, more privileged uh, world title holders or whatever who are making seven figures, okay? Um, it tells me, just looking at his age, um, his height, and his bone structure, there was a time when we thought that he could fight at, at lightweight or junior welterweight. Uh -huh. the, his, his days of making 135, that's definitely Forget over. Yeah. He will probably eventually mature into a welterweight. And he does seem to have the athleticism to be able to do that. But it does make you wonder if that struggle to, 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 to try to make the contracted weight, if it took anything out of him. Um, for his performance tonight. Well, he's got a really tough ombre in front of him that he's going to be uh, taking on, and uh, Zamora, and Zamora's been in with some very good fighters. He has a very good record. He's durable, and I really want to see what Ruben Torres, we all do, can do with him against uh, against Zamora tonight. So that'll be good. But right now, I think we're ready to go back up to Sonny Franco and get things underway for our main event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if I can have your attention at this time, ladies and gentlemen, please rise in observance of our nation's anthem. At this time, I would like to extend a big thank you to all of our soldiers and servicemen serving in our armed forces, both stateside and abroad. We wish them Godspeed and a very safe return home. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, here to perform the national anthem, please welcome round two music recording artist, Miss Elvia Cadena. Oh, say, can you see? Bye. 
Take it to me. But we have eight rounds with them, so for eight rounds, I'm gonna make them feel it tonight. I expect fireworks tonight. I know my opponent is gonna come and try to take it to me and try to get the win. We're not gonna let them. We're gonna take eight rounds and do what they can't do. What we do best and dominate. You should have came out tonight if you're not here, but it's all right. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Everybody who made uh, bought tickets and made it out, thank you so much. You're on for a great night of boxing. Had a terrific camp, almost three months of training. Obviously, not the three months preparing for my current opponent, Ruben Torres. But I've done a lot of work. I've been up in the mountains. I've been doing a lot of strength conditioning, and I'm ready to return to to the ring after a long, long time due to this COVID pandemic. I know a lot about my opponent because we were stablemates for a while in 2019. Uh, I know exactly what he's capable of doing. I know he's a terrific fighter, but he also knows me very well. We spar together, we train together, and now we're going to share the ring. The only difference is now we're fighting one another. We're actually good friends. Um, but this is going to be a great opportunity. I'm here for that particular opportunity, and I want to win. My only prediction for tonight is a very tough fight. I know he's going to be ready, and I know I'm more than ready for it. So uh, my only prediction is going to be a terrific main event. I want to thank all my fans, my family, and everybody that is watching me back at home in Mexico. I am here to shine. This is a great opportunity, and I'm going to take it. Here we go, fight fans, let's get the action going. Oh, once again, please welcome as he makes his wing, right to the ring, out of the red corner, from San Luis Potosi, Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Richard Diamante Zamora. Okay, here comes Richard Zamora, 5'9", 140 pounds, a tough guy. Biggest fight he had on, was on the Showtime Championship Boxing, actually. We went in there against Mario Barrios. Uh, yeah, it was a it terrific was a a fighter. A terrific fighter in his U.S. debut. And he took the fight on short notice. He gave a pretty good account of himself. He was stopped in the fight. Yeah, no pun stopped. intended. That was a tall order like he has tonight. But if you can if you can hang with Barrios a little bit, it should it should give you confidence against somebody like Lopez who, you know, isn't as seasoned as Barrios was at that point. Please welcome his opponent as he makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner from South Central Los Angeles, California. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Ace Ruben Tony. Torres getting ready to enter the ring, building up his own local following here. He 
has shown the ability to box, seems to enjoy the tactical side of the sport, but nonetheless, he has some real punching power. No, he really does. Uh, he's reminded Doug and I of a young man that we first discovered way back in 1997 as an undercard fighter at the Grand Olympic Auditorium, Diego Corrales. What a skinny frame, but dynamite in his hand. Danny Zamora told me last year when they were sparring with Arnold Barboza, who developed into a legitimate junior welterweight contender, he'd get manhandled. 12 months later, he says, Steve, the action is more or less even now. So it really speaks to the development and the growth of that young man, Ruben Torres. Ladies and gentlemen, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the feature attraction as this is the main event of the evening. Section by the California State Athletic Commission, Executive Officer Andy Foster, Chairman John Caravelli, your timekeeper, Ms. Jill Trigg, ringside physicians, Mr. Kenneth De Los Reyes, and Mr. Jeff Roberts. Your three judges scoring this bout should it go the distance are Thomas Taylor, Fernando Villarreal, and Raul Caiz Sr. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Raul Caiz Jr. Eight rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Omega Products Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, where battles are fought and champions are made. Ladies and gentlemen, let the battles begin! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He steps to the ring side wearing the black trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 140.6 ready pounds. As a professional, he has 23 fights to his credit, including 19 victories against four defeats. 12 of those victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, the San Luis Potosí of Mexico, introducing Richard Diamante Zamora. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He stepped in the ring tonight wearing the white trunks of triple red. When he steps onto the scale, he went officially at 141.5 solid pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring undefeated. 15 wins with zero losses. 12 of those victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Bunny Pride of South Central Los Angeles, California. Here he is. Once again, your are in charge, Raul Pais Jr. to give our final instructions. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Ya recibieron las instrucciones con una pelea limpia. Legal punches, golpes legales, here for you, here for you. Touch gloves, glove to both of you. One set to los dos. These junior welterweights match up physically. Not a surprise, Torres is the younger man by five years. He is the taller man, and he has the decided reach advantage. You see that height that Doug referred to, five nine to six foot. Anybody that fights Torres in this, uh, not anybody, but most guys in this division are gonna be faced with that peculiar problem. As we start this fight, which should be a very interesting test for the 15-0 Torres. Richard Zamora, a right-handed fighter. He likes to come forward. He'll show you a lot of side-to-side. -side. You're already seeing it. Side-to-side -side upper body movement. Just moves back and forth. Sometimes it looks a little wasted, but that's his style. He kind of picks up momentum as he comes in. 
has a good right hand. He lunges with his jab sometimes, but uh, he he does manage to land, and he did even in that fight with Barrios. Good, powerful right hands, but he is also susceptible to a right hand. No, keep this in mind. All four of his losses have been of the stoppage variety, two of them in round number one, so it's imperative for him to come out of this relatively unscathed early on. Torres is not necessarily expecting an easy night because Zamora has experience with good fighters. In fact, Torres said, look, he's just not going to fall for certain things that other guys I've been in there have done. So he says, I'm, I'm going to have to be unique with some of my stuff tonight. Torres trying to get that jab to work. Oh, already you could see Ace Torres really starting to get going here with those power punches, and he creates unbelievable power in short distances for a long limb fighter, Rich. Yeah, you know, he has, a, he has a great knockout record, and he does have the power, but as you can see, it all starts with fundamentals. It starts with yeah. the jab. Oh, good left hook. And Zamora felt that one. You can see he's blinking a little bit as he backed off. Torres not going crazy. He's looking to... Spot his punches. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's pacing himself and, and placing his punch as well. I like the hook to the body that sets up the hook to the head. Torres is a tall and rangy fighter who's very good on the outside, but as Steve Kim alluded to, he likes it. He's very comfortable on the inside, and when he's inside, he will drop those body shots. Zamora is going to have to figure out a way to get within punching range of Torres. Torres fighting a very smart first round. Yeah, for the most part, he's keeping Zamora at, uh, at the end of his jab. And Torres, while not a dancer, still manages to use the geometry of the yeah. ring to his advantage. No, he does. And th that, that's the catch-22, though, for Zamora. He may want to be on the inside. The problem is he might be going right into the wheelhouse of a very dangerous short puncher in Torres. <laughs> So a rough first round for Zamora comes to an end. As we take a look at some of the action, Steve, from the first round. And this is what I talk about, the ability to just turn over punches in a real short, compact manner. No fat on, on, on that piece of meat right there. And he just has the ability to really hurt people with, with the shortest of punches. It really does remind me of Chico Corrales. Well, that's a tough act to follow. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> And a lot to live up to, but a lot of people have a lot of hope for Ruben Torres. And he has hope certainly after a very uh, strong first round here tonight. Liked what he gave us in that first round. Ruben said he's been working out with Mabozo. Oh! And again, Zamora's really hurt. His it was a short little left uppercut. I don't think Zamora ever saw it coming, nor did he ever expect it. And he's in real trouble. His legs gave way immediately, and he's going to have to fight his way out of that fog. I think Zamora is a little shocked by what he's been hit with here so far. Well, he doesn't seem to have the ability to, to defend against the left hand of Torres, whether it's a jab hooker cut like he just landed, a left uppercut, a hook to the body, or a hook to the head. He, 
He is going about his business. Ruben Torres here tonight in a, you know, he described himself as a boxer puncher. He's blessed with power. He's blessed with a lot of power with 12 knockouts and 15 fights. His last fight, a one-round KO. He, this is a guy who can really punch, but he enjoys the tactical part of the game, and he's looking to me like he's fighting a very mature fight here. Rich, I think the word you're looking for is clinical. It's very technical. It's very analytical. He's not wasting a lot of punches. Uh, he really does not waste a lot of movement. I think the one style that might give Ruben uh, trouble in the future based on what I've seen in the gym, and again, this was a couple years ago when he's a lot younger, is probably extreme movement. But if you stand in that wheelhouse and you're going to be flat-footed against him, I, I think you're going to run into a lot of things here. Very businesslike attack by Ruben Torres. A lead right hand. Now he looks like he's ready to mix up his attack a little bit more. Coming to the fore with a little bit more motivation. Dangerous game, trying to hook with Torres, which is more he just tried to do. Well, Zamora is, is clearly still in a stage of trying to figure out a strategy here. Yeah, and he might have some cobwebs in his head, too. Yeah, all, all he can manage, uh, manage is uh, an occasional jab to the stomach, an occasional right hand to the stomach, straight right hand. Not much on those punches. Mixing it up, mixing up the attack, dominating. Two rounds in the book. One last round up here of our Facebook audience. Alex Morales, thank you for watching. Frankie Rodriguez, Arturo Castillo, Sergio Torres, Alfonso Lopez, Alejandro Cortez Mendoza. We take a look at some of the replays here of round number two. Zamora able to land a jab to the body. That's about it, but he's a sitting duck for the, that left hook and left uppercut of Torres, and that was the punch that really hurt Zamora in mid-round. And see, that's the catch-22 for Zamora. You would think as the shorter guy, he wants to be in close. The problem is Ace has the ability to shorten up his punches and make him really compact and powerful at the same time. Kind of a damned if you do, damned yeah. if you don't scenario. Because for, he can't win from the tomorrow. outside. Right. One thing Torres has done, he, sh he showed a varied yep. attack here tonight. As we begin round three, two very rough rounds for Zamora, who I will say landed a lot more clean, rock hard punches against Barrios than he did, than he has shown tonight in the two rounds against Torres. He hit Barrios clean with powerful punches on a number of occasions in that fight, although he was stopped in the fourth round. But yeah, Barrios a, a, a formidable guy, um, offensively speaking, but he has always had defensive holes. Probably why Tank Davis, even as a junior lightweight, was looking at him like, thinking, okay, I can land my bombs against this guy. You know, it's, a, it's, it's a tall order, pun intended, but I'm going to be able to land my power against this guy. It's not easy landing power shots against Torres. He keeps his guard up. He's, um, he's always dialed in. You see how, how wide his eyes are. He sees everything. Very measured. I would call him a, you know, a calculating boxer or puncher. And you can tell right now, He's outclassing Zamora, and he could overpower him if he wanted to. If he wanted to step on the, the gas, he could overpower and, and probably overwhelm him in any round he chooses. But I think he's choosing to work on his craft. Ruben is, some things. Ruben is one of those guys we talked about in our pre-fight comments of staying active during yep. the pandemic. This is a guy who fought three times yeah. during the pandemic, and he said he didn't like the quiet, but nonetheless, he kept active. And he's uh, getting the energy tonight. Yeah. 
Zamora doing a slightly better job in this round, the third round, although certainly not winning the round, but has not really been hurt in this round the way it was in each of the first two rounds. The Torres is fighting an intelligent bout. The Torres is just taking his time. He's patiently waiting for the openings, and when he sees them, he, he seizes them. I know this is really disappointing for Zamora because he said this was the first camp in a, uh, several fights where he was healthy and had the time to prepare for a specific opponent. Oh, so he thought he was going to do better. As we mentioned, that Barrios fight he took on short notice. Well, Zamora's body looks good. He's ripped. He does indeed. He made weight, no problem. But he is just uh, outclassed, outsized. As we check in with our Facebook audience, Sergio Torres is watching. Nino De La Rosa, Alfonso Lopez, Guero Gutierrez. Alex Morales, Miguel Galvan, Robert Rodriguez, Claudia Elena Muniz, Roberto Godoy. We want to thank everyone that has joined us throughout the night on Facebook and all the various platforms. Once again, a big thank you to all of our sponsors for helping to make tonight's event and every event possible. Thank you. Very calm in that corner. A little more animated over in Zamora's corner. What could they be telling him? <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, tackle the dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. He needs something unusual to uh, kind of throw Torres off. Because... Something, something drastic. Because well, right look. now, this is this is what we call back in Springfield, Missouri, a slow bleed. Well, Doug, we have a fighter that didn't make weight, had some issues shedding the final pounds, perhaps. The strategy, if there is one, is to get this into the second half. Zamora coming forward. There's that side-to-side -side movement I alluded to in the first round that he likes to use as his style. It seems to set a certain rhythm for him as he bobs and weaves back and forth. And now he digs to the body. Now these punches have a little more mustard on them from Zamora. And I like seeing that. I'm sure Torres will pay him in kind. Oh, good combination from uh, Torres, three punches. There's the side-to-side -side movement again. Zamora actually uses that side-to-side uh, -side upper body movement to try to, you know, get some rhythm uh, as, he, as he comes forward. He usually does that two or three times and then throws a combination. showing a jab to the body. Is Torres laying back here a little too much, you think, no, Steve? I mean, look, he's, this is what he's been. He's looking for an opening to perhaps accelerate and explode. You see him trying to lay some traps here, trying to get Zamora to open up. Got to give Zamora credit, though. He's, big, he's really been tough. He's put, up, put forth a really professional effort tonight. We're trying to reach Torres with jabs as a, as a kind of a futile situation for yeah. him. Uh, to his credit, he's landed more than jabs in this round. The clean power punches he lands are few and far between, but he has landed a few in this round. You know, but for Ace Torres, after blowing out Diego Contreras in one round, which was a ridiculously easy fight, he needed a fight like this. He, he needs some rounds, needs some seasoning. Keep this in mind, he's only 23, and he still had a very truncated amateur career after basically walking away from the sport for about three years. True. And this, I mean, this could be his last eight-rounder. And if that's true, you want to get some quality rounds under your belt before taking on your, your first solid opponent at, at the 10-round distance. 
Kimura trying to land with that overhand right and grimaced as he walked back to his corner. He is blinking his left eye. Samora actually seems to be in some discomfort yeah. in his corner. Could be something like a facial injury, maybe something to his jaw or cheekbone or nose. I can't tell from this angle. No such worries over in the Torres corner where again, it's very calm. Training with Mabozo, with the guys sparring in with Dutch over, has good to, Good people to work with. And we go in now to round number five. Scheduled for eight, our main event. Ruben Torres in the white trunks. Multicolored trunks, Richard Zamora. I'm Rich Murata alongside my broadcast partner Steve Kim and Doug Fisher. We've had a really fun night of uh, boxing here at Omega Products International, the outdoor stadium. Thompson Boxing promoting this We Are Back card. You guys see my scorecard there. This one is not hard to score. It's been all Torres for four rounds. He's been uh, setting the pace, controlling the distance, evading the power shots from Zamora while landing most, if not all, of his very accurate and economical power shots. Steve, do you think Torres has a good jab? It's an interesting question because I don't think he's, he's necessarily your traditional stick and move guy that's built like that. What he does exactly it's not it's not his his fighter's mentality it's yeah, not no. his identity but he has the ability to do that the more in real trouble and he goes down took that knee voluntarily in real trouble here and he's going to have to make a decision on whether he wants to get up or not you're seeing that discomfort in his face he may not get up i don't think he's going to get up there's the count 10 and out rich you asked that question about 45 seconds ago <laughs> scalpel. This young man is a wrecking ball, and he does it with really good tight technique. He's got underrated speed because there's no wasted movement, and I don't know what's going to happen with him at 140, but if he stays on course, I truly believe he has the most upside of any Thompson boxing fighter since Timothy Bradley. I agree. And Zamora, as we mentioned, between rounds he was showing I, some discomfort I, in his fate and he was uncomfortable there. Right. And he rolled over on his own volition. You see that body language? That tells you that the punch that really put him down and kept him down was a body shot. The way he sprawled on the canvas is not how a fighter reacts when he gets concussed, when he takes a big head shot. That, that's from a big body shot. Maybe yeah. the We're, replays will, uh, will play that out and show us. We are watching Richard and he, he is conscious as you can see and he's yeah. actually talking but he, yeah, he but rolled he, over in major discomfort. He's struggling with his breathing and he's having just a hard time getting his legs to work. There was a body shot that folded him but yes. you know facing Ruben Ace Torres is like sticking your head or hand in those jet propellers, those old cellar. <laughs> You're going to get chopped up. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's the, you know, the only time I've ever seen Ruben have problems at the gym was about three, four years ago and he's still very much a novice uh, was at the old Legends gym in Norwalk. Right. A really good boxer that moved on him gave him problems. Now, with that being said, that was three, four years ago. True. This may be a different Ruben Torres. Yeah. He is, I mean, he, he does like to have his feet under him yeah. before he lets his hands go. I, I, I don't want to say he has heavy feet or slow feet um, because he is a, a really good athlete. Let's look at how he oh, is. Yeah. Oh, that left Double hook right shot. There. <laughs> Double shot to the body. Two left hooks to the body. And, and this is just dressing on the cake. Those two, these two shots 
to uh, Zamora's body. That's what got him going and reeling into the corner, his own corner. And this is the coup de gras. You could really see when he went into that corner that he was going to go down. Yeah, he was looking he was... for a place to, to, to take a knee. And Rich, the other thing I, that Torres showed tonight that's really impressive for a, a relatively young fighter is the ability to change speeds. Not everything is thrown as a hard ball or a fastball. You can see him laying back, and then when he has to accelerate or snap real quickly, and then shift gears, he was able to do it. He, he looks like the complete package. Now we have to find out, guys, how does he catch? All right, we are ready for the official announcement. And Sonny Franco's up there right now, but we're going to take a quick break and re get, be right back to get the official verdict from it. Discover the advantages of the Henry FortiFiber 123 Moisture Control System. It's as simple as one, two, three. Choose the weather barrier, add the flashing, then finish up with the Henry Moist Top Sealant. Done. No guessing, no gambling. Just the winning confidence you get from our compatible systems. Makita's cordless outdoor power equipment. The mower is a part of the world's largest battery system and cuts non-stop for up to two miles. The self-propelled model makes mowing effortless. Get unstoppable power without the hassles of gas. Reach speeds of up to 116 miles per hour with the single battery blower. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes one minute, 46 seconds of round number five. <laughs> Referee Raul Caiz Jr. puts a stop to this contest, declaring your winner by unanimous, excuse me, <clears throat> declaring your winner by way of KO and still undefeated Ace Ruben Torres. Sixteen and 0, 13 KOs to his credit now, Ruben Torres. You know, this is a guy who said, we referred to this earlier, he likes the tactical part of the game, but he knows that he's blessed with power, and he's managed to mesh the two. Yeah, he's got great technique, really good fundamentals, a boxing IQ, gets really good sparring. I, you know, I told Doug two, three years ago as he took over this spot, I, I, I said, look, I want to tell you one thing right now. There's a young man I think can go all the way like Danny Roman and Tim Bradley. His name is Ruben Torres. You, you may not know him now, but I think the world's going to know him very, very soon. I found out on that card. He fought on that card and um, I liked what I saw and now uh, others like what they see um, members of the media certainly members of the media here in Southern California um, but hardcore fans worldwide because of these streams 
And uh, I'm sure he is on the radar of uh, some of the members of the Ring Ratings panel when they look at who's next, um, who's who's ne next to enter the 140-pound rankings. And somebody like like Torres can break his way in there after he has his first 10 rounder or or two, and, and that's the next step, going from the eight round level to the 10 round level. So he's ready for that. Would you guys agree? Or you know, according to Alex Campanova, the general manager and the matchmaker for this company. He seems to think he's going to have one more appearance you know, on a show of this nature before they graduate him to, let's say, a show box. All right. And uh, Showtime, they are, and Gordon Hall, our friend, they are they are keeping an eye on him. And yeah. They have been watching him. Uh, here's the last frontier that we have to find out about a, a young man like this, because a lot of this becomes one-way traffic. How does he catch? Right. Got to find out about the chin. And a lot of times we don't find out until they're in their first quote-unquote real fight. But tonight what I liked about it, look, could he have stopped him in one or two rounds? Maybe. I like the fact, like you said, Rich, he actually worked a little bit, set things up, and then he accelerated really fast. The ability to change speeds and have a certain ring intelligence and have that closing instinct, that's what the special fighters have. Yeah, he, he knows when he has uh, things in hand, and he took care of it. He's a good finisher. He's showing that, and he can get around that ring pretty good. All right, Jessica Rosales has now corralled uh, the winner of our main event, right. Ruben Torres. Let's hear from uh, the man who has uh, won from Did it? Six it felt, oh, okay, all right. Oh, all right, guys, joining me now, we've got Ruben Ace Torres, tonight's winner by knockout in the fifth round. And one of the things that we just talked about is how much we miss the crowd cheering. They're not even saying my name and I'm excited. <laughs> it's lovely to have them back, isn't it? It's, it's lovely. It's loud out here. It's, 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 it's what we miss, the energy, you know? Before we... I couldn't even hear my punches tonight, which is different. Like, oh, we were in the gym and in there, like, yep. a couple months ago, sparring and stuff. But, I mean, it's glad to be back. I'm glad to yeah. be back. It's not just a change in what it looks like. It's a change in the energy. It's a change in the atmosphere. How much does that affect you while you're in the ring? Uh, it's tough. It's tough because I'm, like, I'm still getting used to it. It's my 16th professional fight. So as much as I want to say I'm already, like, I'm already a pro at this, which I am, <laughs> it's still, like, especially if, after two years of being off, yep. everybody's, like, get in there, throw hard punches, and then my coach is telling me, look, relax. Don't listen to, don't listen to, yep. the, to them. Listen to me. <laughs> so it's like finding that balance, you know, but it's fun and it was a great experience. Yeah, and talking about that balance, you have found the perfect way to incorporate that into your style. You fight with a very calm demeanor like you're looking for and you're very strategic about it. Where does that come from and how do you get that discipline when you've got people telling you to throw more punches? Uh, as far as like the, the calmness in the ring, yeah. uh, I have a great team around me, so I give it up to them like starting with the uh, with my coaches to uh, my sponsors to my fans to my family i have a great team around me it's always pushing me to to work hard especially in the gym and then uh my stable mates like the guys that are, i'm sparring with like those guys are it's not easy days in the gym you know so being in there uh crazy uh being in there and just you know Having your bad days, it kind of humbles you. It brings you back down when you have nights like this. Then you go back in the gym and you're like, oh, back to square one, you know? Yep. So it's, it's, it's great. Yeah, and talking about being in the gym, Zamora is somebody that you have spent time sparring with. You have seen him training. How different is it being in the gym with him, around him, and then actually being in the ring with him? Uh, who, who did you mention? Zamora. Oh, Danny. Uh, he's, he's great. He's, uh, like, he's, he's been at the highest level of the sport, which is like why I feel like such, it's such a blessing to have him as a coach, I mean, I'm only, I'm only hoping that I can reach that level. I'm gonna keep working till I get there. Absolutely, and you know what? Everybody is asking about who's next, but not just that. What's next? Are we gonna be seeing you in more ten or some ten round fights? Now is eight so rounds done for you? Hopefully, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like I said, I'm gonna just keep working. Um, but I have 100% faith in my team. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think we'll be ready for whatever comes next. All right. And so, what is gonna come next? What would you like to see happen? I'm trying to hit the. I'm trying to crack these top ten. I'm, I'm trying to crack this top 10 and, you know, just get my name pushed out there. Prospect, baby. All right. And how do you feel about tonight's performance? If you were to grade this, where do you think it lands? I, I could have done better. I could have done a lot better. Um, but I'm just glad that we both got out, got out of the ring healthy and uh, that we came out victorious. All right. And one thing I love to do, we've been doing this through the microphone to everybody watching you at home. But now we get to do this to everybody that's watching you here. What's your message to the fans, the ones that you've got here and the ones that you've got on the camera? I hope everybody enjoyed the fight. Uh, first... Uh, uh, first of many to be back. We're back open, baby. We're here. We're, yeah. we're making statements all year long. Let's go. The best part is they can't even hear what we're saying, but if I point at them, they'll start cheering. See? Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Congratulations.
congratulations on the win again tonight with that knockout. We're going to send it back to you guys ringside. All right. Well, everybody's having fun yeah. tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this has been a fun uh, evening. We'll, we'll recap it, but just quickly to top off the Ruben Torres uh, uh, the fight here tonight, I thought he looked uh, very good. I mean, and, and we talked about it on our pre-fight comments and, and analysis about transitioning from prospect to contender. Right. Where does he stand now? I don't think he's quite there yet, given the fact he has not had a 10-rounder, but Alex Campanova just told us a couple of seconds ago his next fight will be in December. He wants a 10-rounder, and I think we're going to learn more then. Uh, the next frontier is, again, is he going to be faced up or matched up against a puncher? And also, uh, they want to discuss with him, is he going to make 140? Mm. Um, yeah. He's a junior waltzweight. Well, if he'll he's a, a tweener, it oh, can be tough. Okay, yeah. right. You know, Danny Zamar told me something real interesting. I said, are you disappointed in your fighter? He said, Steve, no, I'm really not, because Monday through Friday, he's a very disciplined young man. The problem is Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, once That's again, for another, a lot of people. another skinny-armed fighter proves to have great power. Right. You know what? Shades of Diego Corrales. Um, he reminds me a little bit of Josecito Lopez, uh, who was a tall, rangy guy, good athlete, could stick and move. But guess what? He loved to fight. And uh, if he's hungry the way those fighters were and wanted to challenge themselves, I think he has a very bright future. Um, I consider him a prospect. I consider him one of the best eight-round level prospects in, in all of California, maybe in the mm -hmm. U.S., um, and maybe in a fight or two, we, we might be considering him uh, a contender. Well, I was just really impressed with the mature tactical attitude and then mixing in his power with it that he uh, that he brought to the fore tonight. We've had a great, great night of a lot of lot of fun. Louis Lopez with a unanimous decision victory. He had all fight. his solid. fans here and he solid looked work. very good over late. Had to chop down the tree to a little bit. He didn't get it to go timber. But uh, from the very beginning, set the tone, was a stronger fighter, closed the gap. Leighton was very game, very tough. But Lopez took that step tonight. And before that, we saw, uh, once again, we saw Madueño, who we call the mystery man from Mexico, record another one-round uh, knockout here. He's certainly building up an impressive record. We'd like to see him in with a guy maybe who can catch a little better than uh, yeah. He definitely is fun to watch. I mean, he brings There's a lot work in to there. be done there, but you can't teach power. And he's got power, and he's very game. He's from a, a great part of Mexico, Sinaloa. Uh, a lot of heroes from that region of Mexico, and he has the look um, of a fighter that could attract a big crowd one day. And uh, our other winners tonight, Lazaro Vargas winning again, and uh, Akatsugi winning again by a unanimous decision. All in all, the We Are Back card, the return of fans, the whole atmosphere successful. No, it really is. And this is what Thompson Boxing is about. Consistent activity, developing young fighters, and doing it in the process of some competitive bouts. And uh, my understanding is I think they'll be back at their old haunts at the Doubletree in Ontario in the month of October. All right. Well, it sounds good. It's been great working with both of you here tonight. Same here, Rich. This has been fun. Doug, for Doug Fisher, for Steve Kim, I'm Rich Murata. Thanks very much for being with us. And uh, we appreciate uh, your support. And the Thompson Boxing, I know, uh, definitely appreciates it. So we'll look forward to talking to you the next time. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you again soon.